Farm Stadium in Long Beach, California with David Hum. I'm Randy Rosenblum on a glorious day for college football. The series record, Nevada Las Vegas leads 4-3. They've won the last two times back in 1986 here at Veterans Stadium, 31-8. And at the Silver Bowl in Las Vegas last year, the Rebels were victorious, 30-17. Larry Reisbig is in his second year as the head football coach for the Long Beach State 49ers. In that time, he's accumulated a 7 and 15 mark at Long Beach State. His counterpart is Wayne Nunley. There he is in the cap. Wayne is 14 and 18. This is his third year running the program at UNLV. Four years prior to that, he was an assistant coach under the Harvey Hyde administration. He thinks he's going to have an outstanding football team next year. This is the kicker, David Van Steenkist. He was the hero of our game back on October 15th in the last five seconds, kicking a field goal to beat Cal State Fullerton. Back deep, Bernard Jackson, number five for the Rebels. We'll see Bernard today as a wide receiver. Last year, he was one of the running backs for Wayne Nunley. Final Big West game of the year. Fresno State has already captured the crown. They will represent the conference in Fresno, December 10th in the California Bowl against Western Michigan, the winners of the Mid-American Conference. Van Steen Kiss advances on the ball, and here we go. A short kick, and Bernard Jackson picks it up at the 10-yard line. And a great return across the 40-yard line for Bernard Jackson. 36 yards. That's a positive start for the UNLV team. Leon Patterson finally brought him down. Bernard Jackson here on a short kickoff. The, their coverage team looked like it delayed just a little bit. Bernard Jackson with the big return helps Richard Williams with great field position for his very first offensive drive as the quarterback. Richard Williams will run the team out of the eye. Wayne Nunley told us before the game he wants to establish the ground attack. This is Tommy Jackson, breaks a couple tackles and gets two or three yards. Now last year, Richard Williams completed 43 of 100, 541 yards, six touchdowns and eight interceptions. He started five games. This is his initial start of the 1988 year. And he told us he wants to have a lot of fun today. I guess if you win, you have fun. So obviously he would like to get the W. Second and seven. A nice safe pass to his tight end, Robert Welch. Well, if you're gonna get your feet wet, a little slant pattern is easy to do it with your tight end. That offensive backs and receivers, Jackson and Brightman, a very fine pair. Wills, McCardle, and the tight end, Rogers. That was a good call there by Richard Williams. The, the thing is, get that first completion and get your confidence going. Arden, Oprin, Paco, Ruggles, and Quinton. Third down and two, the ball at the 47-yard line. Tommy Jackson breaks it to the outside. And he's ridden down by the free safety, Keith Washington. But it's a first down for Tommy Jackson. Now, last year, he had a 44-yard touchdown run against Larry Rice Big's 49ers. The 3-4 front of the 49ers, Reap, Hawkins, and Duffy. The linebackers to strength of the defense, Morrison, Ziegenhagen, Goodnay, and Jenkins. The deep secondary, Alexander, all-conference material. Jenkins has four interceptions, Patterson, and Washington. Tommy Jackson again. The workhorse early has another substantial game. Tommy Jackson did a great job there. That play was designed to go off the left tackle. He broke it back against the pursuit. But this is the big advantage of having a good running game and a running back like Tommy Jackson with 825 yards coming into today's game. It's second down and five, and that takes so much pressure off a young quarterback like Richard Williams. Jackson already carries three times in this conference game early in the game gets five yards there and it's second and five a good look at Richard Williams the senior Keenan McCardle in motion 
over the middle, it's Jackson coming out of the backfield. Amongst other things, Jackson's the leading receiver on the club. That's his 25th catch. Good for 12 yards and another Rebel first down. In a well-designed play, I'm surprised that Cal State Long Beach is not blitzing Richard Williams. This is a good throw to Tommy Jackson. Jackson, you can see the, the condition of the field there. It's, it's very wet in between the hash marks, but a good drive for Richard, Richard Williams on his very first one. Larry Reisbig's defense. An area of concern right now. First down for the Rebels at the 27-yard line. Again, it's Tommy Jackson, and this time he's cut down, cannot get to the outside. Good penetration from that man, the free safety Keith Washington, a sophomore from Los Angeles' Bourbon Day High School. Well, there you can see that you're not going to get the AstroTurf cuts that uh, on this field because of, of the dampness of the surface. Jackson is thrown for a one-yard loss. It is second down and 11. We talked to Richard Williams in pregame, and he says, this is my season. It's just too bad. It's only one game long. Remember, he did start the five games last year, including the opener a year ago against Southwestern Louisiana. Prior to that, he was at Fullerton Junior College. Again, they keep it on the ground, and again, they snuff it out. Darren Brightman tripped as he took the handoff, and Pat Quigley was right there to secure the tackle. Watch the footing here as Darren Brightman tries to make the cut outside against Quigley. Usually when the players come out in pregame, they will test the field and usually go back in and say, I want longer cleats to the equipment manager. So it's interesting to see that if they did have, the, if they did bring the cleats. Well, it's a beautiful day today, but last night we had a, a rainstorm here in Long Beach and obviously it affected the field and it affected Darren Brightman on his first carry. It's third and 13 from the 30 yard line. Going deep and too far intended for Ricky Will. At its fourth down, and that'll send on Jim Cook, the placement specialist. Randy, this is where it's interesting to watch because of Jim Cook being the soccer style kicker. He's kicking from pretty well in the middle of the field, which is really the wettest and the most slippery. So his plant foot, and believe me, these soccer style kickers really take a lot of caution sometimes, and sometimes it'll throw their, their motion off. Cook has a tremendous leg. He has the five longest field goals in Rebel history. He's hit from 49, 50, 53 twice, and 54 yards out. This one from 47 yards is high enough, but he's wide to the right, had the distance too. So a nice drive comes up empty. Jim Cook is upset. The 49ers hold 10 minutes, seconds left, first half. We're scoreless at Veterans Stadium. No score, 10 minutes, 29 seconds remaining. Opening quarter. And for the moment, we have a official's timeout. That's referee Mike Pereira. And now the 49ers and quarterback Jeff Graham come to the line of scrimmage. The all-time passing leader at Long Beach State. Shelton on the draw, and he cracks it to the 35-yard line. Jody Reinhold made the stop. Jeff Graham has had an incredible career here, hitting 55% of his aerials this season, good for 2,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. He's been picked off 16 times. He's been under heavy pressure all year. In fact, last week against Fresno State, he was sacked 10 times. But he has excellent mobility, and he can really throw on the run. A gain of five for Shelton. It's second and five. Over the middle. And that's a first down out near the midfield strike. Jim Bittner gets 14 yards curling out of that backfield. Interesting Long Beach State. They run the draw on first play. You can do that when you're a passing team. Lafayette Shelton and Jim Bittner. Derek Washington, the big play receiver, Kelly Ryan, and Brian Wiss, who's caught two touchdowns from his tight end position. McKinnon and Adams, the strong side of that offensive line, even though they're designated as the quick side. That's Brian Wiss in motion. And again, it's Lafayette Shelton, and this time they wrap him up. Big number 79, Aaron Christian. 
Aaron Christian, they want to put a little more weight on him. He and Pappas alternate, along with Doc Wise and Derek Nicholson up front. Linebackers Foster, Ryan Holes, the leading tackler on the team, Clark and Avery Miller. Secondary, Fowler, Al Hemmons, Crozier, and Charles Anthony. Anthony probably the best of the group. Second down and 10 for Long Beach State. Graham with good protection. Now he's going to tuck it under. And he'll get five to the Rebel 45-yard line. Gerald Robinson stopped him there with help from 55, the strong outside linebacker, John Foster. That time the Rebels blitzed Jeff Graham, and, and Graham is a quarterback that you've got to put control pressure on him because he's not a great running quarterback, but he's a guy that can get some positive yardage and cause problems for your defense. And he'll be looking in one of those crucial downs, third and five. Derek Washington deployed wide to the left side. Kelly Ryan to the right side. And they move the pocket. Throwing on the run, but a very fine play by Al Hemmons, the left side cornerback. But that's what they will do. They will move Jeff Graham out of the pocket. He wanted to go to Kelly Ryan, but Hemmons was too tough there, and it's fourth and five. And now the 49ers will have to punt the football. Jeff Graham, six foot four and 200 pounds. He's got good mobility for his size, and that's something that the pro scouts like to see in a quarterback these days. Willie Lujan had a tough time last week, had a kick block at Fresno State. Also had one that he was forced to run and turn the ball over. He gets this one off nicely, though. And Keenan McCarter will call for a fair catch at his 13-yard line. Seven minutes, 58 seconds left in the opening quarter from Veterans Stadium. We're scoreless. UNLV's second possession of the game. Both teams drove the football, but the drives were stalled. UNLV tried a long field goal by Jim Cook and failed. Richard Williams, the senior, is the signal caller for Wayne Nunley's team in this final game today. Again, it's the second back through Tommy Jackson, and he lost the ball. A big hole for Tommy Jackson as he headed up field. This might be a first, Randy. Tommy Jackson ran into the official and looked like he fumbled it in that collision. We'll watch the replay again. Wayne Nunley trying to establish the run. A great hole up the middle. Jackson cuts back and runs into the official, knocks the ball away. That would go into the official's highlight film of great hits. Tommy Jackson is saying it's rough enough running against 11, not 12, too. There you can see the ball just gets stripped away. We'll see the recovery. I've never really seen that happen where a ball carrier has run into an official. And Robert Welsh the is the man that picked it up the tight end and saved the day for the moment for UNLV. Williams looking to throw again. Darren Brightman at the 30. Head down to the 35-yard line. Then he's ridden out of bounds. Again, it was Pat Quigley who made the stop, but there is a flag. Now, that would be a gain of 12 yards. It's a personal foul against UNLV, though. 58 on a late hit. So that will wipe out a fine game. 58. I've been impressed okay. with the play of Richard Williams. I've also been impressed with the way Rodney Bell, the offensive coordinator for the Rebels, They've tried to mix in the play action pass, the three to four step drop to get let Williams get rid of the ball, get some completions and get some confidence. And I think Williams has got to feel pretty good about himself in his play here in the first quarter. Richard Williams has hit two out of his first three for 17 yards. And they march it off. Back just inside the 20 yard line. Dead ball foul, personal foul on the offense. It's going to be first and 25. That's a call you don't see a lot and really, really hurts this offense. They've got a new quarterback in there. They've got some good things going. And all of a sudden, a foul like that as you look at the two head coaches. I know Wayne Nunley's got to be real upset with that because he had things going and had some momentum going the offensive way. And that puts undue pressure on this man, Richard Williams. Looking to throw. Morrison has him for a sack. Bill Morrison, the senior from Sunny Mead, California, a three-year starter for the beach, makes a big defensive play. This time, Richard Williams, you can see the inexperience or lack of playing time here. 
really on this situation, you just want to get rid of the ball if you don't have a receiver open. He takes the sack and puts the Rebels in even a longer uh, down situation to get that first down. Back at their 10-yard line, there's Morrison, a big play player, comes through. It's second and 35 now. Defense can really tee off and come after Williams. So they'll keep it on the ground with Brightman. Across the 20 to the 22-yard line, well shy of the first down and the grasp of R.J. Coors. But he gets the Rebels back some decent field position, and Brightman's so tough up the middle. Running him outside is not his strong suit. When he gains most of that 477 yards, it's between that guard center gap. Hard to believe Darren Brightman doesn't have a touchdown this year. He's accumulated the yards. He's had a pretty good yards per carry. Had a long run of 33 against Tulsa, but no touchdown. He's a real leader on this team, though, through his attitude and work habits. Third and 23. And Williams with great pocket protection for Ricky Wills. It's incomplete. Wills guarded tightly by R.J. Kors, and Kors thought he had an interception for the moment, but he was out of bounds. Richard Williams does not have the, the strong arm. If, if Williams is going to throw deep, he's going to have to throw it much sooner than this. Any receiver is going to be out of your range here, and you can see this goes to a jump ball. Kors ends up with it. Looked like he had possession to me inside the out-of-bounds side. Well, they were fighting for it. It was ruled that he was out of bounds. Third of the nation, Tony Ryan. High snap, but he has the height to climb the ladder. Stacy Alexander. Call for the fair catch at the 35-yard line. College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen, who invite you to see the Volkswagen Fox today at your local Volkswagen dealer. And by Strohs and Stroh Light. Now you're talking good times, and Strohs is spoken here. Five minutes and 22 seconds left here at Veterans Stadium in the opening quarter. UNLV and Long Beach State are scoreless. Wiss in motion, and Jeff Graham again in. And whenever he's on the field, anything can happen. He's very dangerous. And you can see he has good running skills, this time captured from behind by Doc Wise, number 93. Jeff Graham isn't really known for his running. And as a quarterback, when you cut back against the grain, you've got to remember there's pursuit coming to Graham's right. He sees it's open, and he's going to turn it upfield. But watch him try to cut back and watch the hit Doc Wise puts on Jeff Graham and never sees it. You have to be able to take the punishment if you're a quarterback. And Graham has been hit a lot this year. Four minutes, 45 seconds left. On the ground. Lafayette Shelton. That's a good effort. And Lafayette Shelton with that lunge forward got an apparent first down. Yes, a first down for Long Beach State. With Andre Sutherland hurt, Lafayette Shelton's really going to have to carry the load in the running game today, but he's also so tough coming out of the backfield in the passing game. Along with the statistics you see there, he has caught 39 passes, so he is one of the favorite targets for quarterback Jeff Graham. That's a good throw to Kelly Ryan and a first down to the Rebel 41-yard line. You give Jeff Graham protection, he will find the open receiver. The fun thing about Jeff Graham, Jeff Graham's a senior quarterback, strong kid. Watch him stand in the pocket. He doesn't feel the rush at all. He gets a little pressure to his left, but a good throw there. Jeff Graham, 14-yard gain. Graham is a prototype pro passer. Well, they've had some good players here in Todd Dillon and Doug Gaynor, and he's certainly fallen in their footsteps. A lot of people feel he will stick in the NFL. Bittner in motion, trying to set up that screen. Brian Browning is cut down on the open field. That's a big play by Ron Banks. There aren't very many seniors on this UNLV team, but Banks is one of them. And in the open field, what he did there is not easy. Well, Jeff Graham in the Long Beach State offensive line did a good job of showing pass and setting up the screen. Banks did a great job of getting off the block and making the tackle for no gain. Wayne Nunley trying to shout encouragement to his squad. They have not played well in recent weeks, and he knows it. On second and ten. 
This is Jim Bittner with a gaping hole inside the 30-yard line. And the free safety, Charles Anthony, pushes him out of bounds. But another first down for the 49ers who are moving it both on the ground and in the air. Good call by Jeff Graham. Jeff has been giving that look to the rollout. You see all the motion go to the right, Bittner back to the left in the open field against Charles Anthony. Tough tackle for a defensive back. That's a 15-yard pickup for Jim Bittner, a junior college transfer out of Moore Park, California, at Moore Park JC. Had a touchdown earlier this year against New Mexico State. From the Rubble 28-yard line. Jeff Graham went for it all on the deep quarter pattern just out of the grasp of Greg Johnson. Johnson only has four catches this year, David, but two of them for TDs against San Jose State. Well, that should have been a fifth and a third for a touchdown. That was a great throw by Jeff Graham. Graham read the blitz by the Rebel linebackers, audibleized to the fade pattern, and that was one that should have been caught. Three minutes and nine seconds left. Opening quarter. And Long Beach State at the Rebel 28 is looking at second and 10. They move it wide with Lafayette Shelton. At the 22-yard line, it goes down. Excellent blend of play. Hemmons makes the hit there, but Graham is mixing it up nicely. He sure is, and, and you know, the thing with Graham, he's got the great the great arm, so uh, Larry Reisbeck knows he can throw. They're mixing in the play-action pass. They're rolling Graham out so that defense can't sit in there and put the big pass rush on his quarterback, doing a good job of mixing it up. Mike Newsom wide to the left side. Greg Johnson to the right on third and four. 49ers trying to get on the board first. Bittner has a first down to the 15-yard line. Jody Reinhold, the inside linebacker, made the stop, but the 49ers have a nice drive. Well, it was third down and three. They're going to bring Bittner underneath. Wiss was just behind. Good throw. Bittner, tough running back. And when he's in that situation, you only need about three yards. Easy to get the first down. Larry Rise big on the sideline, trying to engineer the fourth victory of the year for Long Beach State. Bittner in motion. Quick pitch goes to Lafayette Shelton, and he has room to the 10, the five touchdown. A 15-yard TD run for Lafayette Shelton. Well, and Jim Bittner, the fullback there, got a great lead block on Charles Anthony, and then it was just Shelton's speed outside to cut it back and get the touchdown. We'll watch it again here. Bittner will go in motion. You can see number 33 out in front of Lafayette Shelton gets the good block on number four, Charles Anthony, and then it's just open sailing for Lafayette Shelton. The 15-yard TD for Shelton. The senior playing his final game in front of the home folks. Gets the 49ers on the board first. Van Steenkist adds the extra point. There is a marker down. Offside. On UNLV, that'll be assessed on the kickoff. So the extra point will stand for David Van Steenkist. Two minutes, three seconds left. Opening quarter, the TD run by Shelton has given the 49ers a 7-0 lead. Martina Navratilova and Chris Everett continue their longtime rivalry where they square off of the Michelin Tennis Challenge. It's Sunday, live at 6 o'clock, exclusively on Prime Ticket. Lafayette Shelton. Rambles 15 yards for a TD with two minutes and three seconds left here in the first quarter. David Van Steenkist adds the extra point, and the 49ers lead 7-0. A great drive and a good first score for the 49ers. Now Wayne Nunley, his job is to get, keep his players up, get young Richard Williams. Williams is going to have a little bit of pressure now to get this drive back, get a drive going, and get some points on the board. And Steenkiss now kicking off for Long Beach State to Bernard Jackson and Ricky Wills. Wills will not come out.
Randy, one of the toughest situations, when you're when you're in the conference fight and you're fighting for a crown, it's easy to get your players up. When you know that you're going home, it's your last game of the year, you've got a lot of distractions. A lot of the Rebel players are from Southern California and will stay down after this game to visit with their families. So Wayne Nunley, both of these coaches, Larry Reisvig and Wayne Nunley, they've got a big job cut out for them today. Wayne Nunley's so optimistic about next year, but the flow the last few weeks has been negative, and that really bothers him. Wanted to end on a positive note. Darren Brightman can't get outside because of the nice effort of Keith Jenkins, the left side cornerback. Jenkins came up and really ran that run nicely. The strength of this 49er defense is in their linebackers, but they're a group. They fly to the ball. They get a lot of people around the ball. And they, they've given up some drives and big plays, but their, their main thing is they just get to the ball and try to keep their, their, their offense and, and team in the game. Brightman gains three at second and seven. Down to a minute 25 left in the opening quarter from Veterans Stadium in Long Beach. Williams. Nearly intercepted by Mark Turville. Number 26 read the play at Iceland and nearly had the interception. That time Richard Williams read the blitz by the 49er defense. It was late, and I think the clock was starting to go on him. That ball could have been intercepted and returned for a touchdown. You can see the quick drop. He waits a little long on it. Remember his timing. You don't get a lot of practice time when you're the third quarterback. You see the ball behind Jackson, since it was tipped, he was legal to be hit up. That was Tom Keynes, the linebacker, second on the team in tackles last year, and he's second again this year. He got that paw up, and uh, it was up for grabs. Third and seven at the 23-yard line. For Ricky Wills. Wills has it, and then dropped the ball. It's ruled a fumble and a recovery and a first down. Wills probably would have had the touchdown had he not fumbled. He would have had the touchdown easily. A good throw by Richard Williams. We'll see if Wills holds on to this here. A good throw, 49-yard gain. Watch Wills come back for the ball. Has the ball here, takes one step. He's running and drops the ball. Would have been an easy touchdown. He had the in inside of the field. He could have scored easily on that play. Here from another angle, you can see Wills has the inside position on number 27. Keith Jenkins catches it and then drops the ball. So the Rebels at the 28 now, the 49ers looking for the tying score. Down 7-0 with 45 seconds left in the opening quarter. Williams for Bernard Jackson. Touchdown, UNLV. A 28-yard strike for the senior to another senior, Bernard Jackson. A great throw by Richard Williams that time. Threw the ball over Keith Jenkins, number 27 again. Watch Bernard Jackson on the fade. The same pattern, two plays in a row. This is a super throw by Williams. Hits Jackson right on the run and just over the outstretched hands of number 27, Keith Jenkins. From ground level, this is a perfect throw. It's a fade. You want to throw this over the outside shoulder. Good catch by Jackson. Good concentration. And you know that makes Ricky Wills feel much better about things because he fumbled on the previous play when he had an apparent score. Jim Cook now will try to tie it. And does. Just 38 seconds left here in the first quarter at Veterans Stadium, the final Big West game of the year. And Bernard Jackson catches the TD, and that ties the game at seven apiece. Jackson last year spent a lot of time in the backfield rushing the football. He's a converted wide receiver, and for Richard Williams, a golden moment. Well, what a great feeling for this young man. He'd only thrown one pass, no completions in this in the, uh, the whole season, so Richard Williams has to feel great about his play here in the first quarter. On Tuesday, Prime Ticket takes you poolside for the NCAA Water Polo Championship. Prime Ticket continues to deliver the best in collegiate sports. Tuesday at 5 o'clock. We're at Veterans Stadium in Long Beach, California. With David Hum, I'm Randy Rosenblum. We talked about it on our pregame show, a competitive battle. Both teams have moved the football, and now both teams have gotten it in the end zone. Well, and we just said Richard Williams had to have a good drive, get the Rebels back in the game. He's not known for a strong arm. He comes out and throws two balls deep, gets a score quick for the Rebels, and they're right back in it. 
Dan Davis on your left, Bobby Flanoid on your right. Davis, a real speedster on the track team at Long Beach State. Back at one point, number six, who will return it, ran a 10-400 meter. Now this is Davis from his nine. And Jody Reinhold with a terrific hit on the specialty team. Jody Reinhold, the starting linebacker on the kickoff coverage team. That guy just loves to hit people. He's their, their leader in total tackles and, and really didn't start the season, then came on strong about the second or third game for the Rebels and has established himself as their defensive leader. How many times have you seen it on all levels, those inside linebackers? We saw it with Tracy Rogers of Fresno State all year long. They just love to hit people. The first time I saw him, he, he has a Brian Bosworth-style haircut, and I didn't know who he was, and then his play, he's, he's really going to stand up for him this year. First down at the 25-yard line. The final 33 seconds of the opening quarter. Lafayette Shelton is wide open. And that's another first down. Those backs are getting open. They're finding the seam on the defense. What are they doing, David, to find that opening? Well, when you see a defensive team that plays the zone and the linebackers drop back into their hook zone, the backs out of the backfield underneath, you see Graham with plenty of time to throw and let this play develop. Let those linebackers drop deep to cover the, the outside receivers, and that underneath soft part is always open. Rock winding down on the opening quarter. A 7-7 tie. First down at the 37-yard line. Lafayette Shelton runs into that front wall and goes very, very few yards there. That ends the opening quarter. Burn Stadium. A touchdown for each side. Long Beach State and UNLV are tied at seven apiece. I loved the high. I loved it. I swore nothing could touch me. I um, tried to kill myself in ninth grade. I knew what I was doing wasn't right but I couldn't stop on my own. I feel like I'm not wanted, you know. Just nobody wants me to where would I go, you know. When it feels like there's no way out, remember the United Way supports groups in our community that really care. There is a way, United Way. You may not realize it, but either you or someone you know has probably been helped by United Way. Because when you give to United Way, you actually help support many different agencies and programs in our community. Whether it's through a counseling center or a youth group, United Way donations and volunteers are working to deliver services that are there when you need them. Comcast supports United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. As we move into the second quarter, we are tied at seven. From the 36-yard line, it is second down and 10 for Graham, who dropped it, and now has to scramble, and down he goes. And now I believe he lost it again, and UNLV says they have it, and they do, apparently. Doc Wise. A big mistake by the senior quarterback. Really, the most fundamental play in football is the center quarterback exchange. The final game of the season, you really don't expect th to see this happen. You see number 55, John Foster, hit Graham, caused the ball to come loose, and Doc Wise ends up on top of it. And you see that a lot. Once a player fumbles, they'll pick it up. For some reason, they just can't get the grip on it, and they'll fumble it again, and that's what happened to Graham there. Well, they know they've made a mistake, so they end up trying harder to correct that mistake, and there you saw Jeff Graham fumble the ball. And Richard Williams, who's building confidence as this contest goes on, excellent field position. At the 49 or 34, on the delay, they hand the football off, and running hard is Darren Brightman down to the 25-yard line. A gain of nine for Brightman. When you've got a quarterback that's throwing the ball well, like Richard Williams is here in the early part of the game, the draws work for you. There, Darren Brightman, super job. Now it's second down and short, really a throwaway down. The Rebels can do whatever they want on this down. All right, you're the quarterback. Would you go up top here? Are you kidding me? I'd put it up right away. And Richard Williams, he knows this is his last game. He might not have a chance to wear pads again. I'm sure he'd like to throw it. Well, he has Jackson, the touchdown maker, to the far side and to the near side, Keenan McCardle. From the 49er 26, UNLV trying to get the lead. Tommy Jackson, a big first down, and he slides down at the 15. 
there were more yards there. But again, he lost his footing. But remember, Richard Williams isn't calling the play, so the Rebels there keep the ball on the ground. They know they've got Darren Brightman and Tommy Jackson back there. Jackson, again, that awareness, the play was designed inside. He saw it was stopped there and bounced it outside, made a big gain again. Well, the slippery turf has cost both Tommy Jackson and Darren Brightman now more yards. On that occasion, Jackson would have had a huge chunk. He picked up nine as it is, and it's first down from the 49 or 15-yard line. The tight end, Robert Welch, and he's inside the five, and it's first and goal for UNLV. Good controlled passing game for the Rebels. We'll watch Richard Williams drop back. He's got great protection here. Williams will look around. Remember, he's a senior quarterback. He's been in the program for a couple years now. Welch on the delay. Watch this big, strong tight end lower his shoulders and try to get into the end zone. Welch has done a great job since the loss of Cedric Davis with the vertebrae and the neck surgery. As you look at him, six foot four, 230-pound junior. Since Cedric Davis has gone down, he's come in and done a great job for the Rebels. Welch out of Chino Hills, California. First and three for a touchdown in the full house backfield. It's Darren Brightman trying to get his first score of the year. And he's about a half a yard shy of Pater. Brightman's really tough down here. Usually they use him in a blocking situation when... Brightman runs the ball. It's usually out in the midfield between the 20s where they run that little delay trap uh, between the guard and center uh, gap. This is a tough kid. Watch him. Watch Richard Williams, the handoff to Darren Brightman. Brightman, watch him accelerate. As soon as he knows he's going against a defensive back, R.J. Coors there. See just how close he almost got in to getting into the end zone. I believe that's Tony Paco. The center of UNLV, a senior, fifth year in the program. One of the real leaders for UNLV, along with Bill Oprin on that offensive line. Tony's one of those guys that always fights through the injuries, and to pull him out of a game, he's really got to be hurt. 13 minutes, five seconds left. First half, we're even at seven apiece with UNLV in Long Beach State. Paul Elder has replaced... This young man, Tony Pinko, elder at center, on second down, and a yard to go for a Rebel touchdown. Again, it's Brightman. And this time, he goes over the top for the first touchdown of the year for the junior, Darren Brightman, out of San Diego's Point Loma High School. And the Rebels lead for the first time this afternoon. 13 to 7. Usually it's the tailback in the eye formation that you see get the air under him and get over the defensive line. Watch Darren Brightman from the fullback position. Sky to get over this defensive line. I think he, there's really nobody there. RJ Coors to hit him. But a good job. I'm sure Darren Brightman excited about his first touchdown. Darren Brightman. Good Very impressive kid. running back. And fun kid to talk to. He loves playing the game. He'd like to carry the ball more, but you got Tommy Jackson. McArnold places it down and Cook drills another PAT. So UNLV builds on their lead to 14-7. 12 minutes, 53 seconds left. First half. Nothing tastes as festive. Zesty. Latin. As the new guacamole bacon cheeseburger from Carl's Jr. Charbroiled with two strips of crisp bacon and rich, creamy guacamole. Olay. The new guacamole bacon cheeseburger for a limited time only at Carl's Jr. Oh, look at this. It's priceless. Naturally. It's mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. Here we go. Oh, wait. I'm going to charge it with the American Express card. That way it's automatically insured. Hi, did you get it? Hi, Mom. Terrific. You won't believe it. Don't worry. Remember, I used the American Express card. So it's insured. Lost, stolen, or damaged. A way to protect the things you buy. Membership has its privileges. College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen, who invite you to see the Volkswagen Fox today at your local Volkswagen dealer. And by Great Western's family of companies. With over $30 billion in assets, 100 years strong, we'll always be there. 
UNLV. Well, they fell behind 7-0 when Lafayette Shelton ran 15 yards for a TD. But Richard Williams has come back and thrown a 28-yard TD to Bernard Jackson, and now a one-yard scoring plunge from Darren Brightman. And with 12.53 left in this opening half, it is the Rebels that lead by a TD. And I've been impressed with the play of Richard Williams and the fact that Wayne Nunley and Rodney Bell are letting Williams throw the ball. They're mixing it up and doing everything they would if, if Charles Price was in the game. Jim Cook, senior record holder at UNLV, broke most of Joey D. Giovanna's records. Stan Davis will return from his 10-yard line. And down he goes, taken down by Gerald Robinson after a 17-yard return. Randy, the Rebels have been averaging on offense just over 13 points per game. They've got 14 points here uh, early in the second quarter. Richard Williams has done a good job of throwing both short and long, and I, I don't think the 49ers thought that Williams could throw deep. And after being shut out 42-0 last week, Wayne Nunley's happy to see his offense wake up. Now it's up to Jeff Graham to try to move his squad. The three-year starter, Jeff Graham, and he sends Jim Bittner in motion. Looking to set up that screen to Shelton. Breaks one tackle, and Lafayette is finally dropped out across the 30-yard line. Able to break the tackle of Michael Fowler. These are terrific numbers for Jeff Graham. Most completions, most attempts, most yards. And he's two TDs shy of Jack Riley's 41. Riley did those terrific numbers, 41 scores, back in 1965 and 66. And today, Mr. Graham is six for eight for 49 yards. Sweep with Lafayette Shelton. Well, that's the same play that got the touchdown. And again, positive yardage and a first down for Long Beach State. Well, and Lafayette Shelton right there showed his athletic ability. This is a sweet play. He made the move like he was going to break it inside, set Jim Bittner, his fullback, up for the block. Watch the sweep. He'll make the Rebel defense think that he's going to go inside. Bittner gets a good job of walling off um, the pursuit by the Rebels. You see him run over number six, Gerald Robinson of the Rebels. And with Andre Sutherland sideline, Lafayette Shelton will carry the load today on the ground for the 49er. Graham being chased and finds Derek Washington. Washington dragged down from behind by Jody Ryanhole, but that's what Graham can do. When the pocket breaks down, he still can find his receivers. This is a play designed to go to Derek Washington. It's the delay underneath. They send Shelton in motion to the left. Graham does a good job, but watch the pursuit of Jody Reinhold, a linebacker chasing a speed guy like Derek Washington. And what a big moment, too, for Derek Washington. That's his 100th catch of his 49er career, and he's but a junior. He's seventh all time at Long Beach State. Middle of the line is Jim Bittner on cross buck action, and there is a flag down. Little misdirection there, and they've set up that misdirection by Graham rolling to his right and left. It sets up that kind of little delay draw and counter trap. Yeah, one of the rebels. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Went for that face man. A lot of times that'll happen when all the motion is going one way and they run the reverse the other. A defensive player will just stick his hand out and try to get it back that's cutting back against the grain and they'll get caught in that face mask. We have an incidental face mask, a five yard penalty against the defense. Down remains first down, half a yard. Randy, you see both teams really opening it up, throwing the ball, running the reverses, the counter traps. Kind of fun to see it. This is a game that is meaningful to each team, but it's not for the conference title anymore. You wonder a lot of times if teams would have played like this during the regular season, what their situation would be in the one-loss column now. And again, Graham went for his little back Lafayette Shelton. And it's second and still less than one. How often do you see a first down play and less than one yard to go? That's what happened with the penalty on that face mask. Well, really Jeff Graham has to be confident. He threw for 352 yards against the Rebels last year. 
and he had 30 completion. UNLV leading 14-7. 49ers driving. They're at the Rebel 46-yard line. That's a first down carry for Jim Bittner. And he's inside the 40, down at the 37. Both offenses have basically moved the ball up and down the field. We'll see if Graham can get this in and tie it up. Second year for Larry Rise, big. Had some tough moments, but as the season has unfolded, his team has gotten better. And Graham is throwing on first down. Flag is down again. And yet it's the South D valve to Lafayette Shelton, and he's taken down by Ron Banks. But let's check the marker. With the time that Jeff Graham had there, you've got to believe this is offensive holding. But Jeff Graham does a good job of showing his experience there and his composure. He went to his third receiver. This play was designed to go deep to the right. He looked to the right, looked to the middle, and came back to the left, and he showed the composure he had. Jeff Graham, great kid. He was our prime ticket player of the game on October 15th when he rallied the 49ers in the final two minutes to beat Cal State Fullerton here 24-22. And well-spoken, right. We have holding against the offense. That penalty is accepted. First down. Actually, two infractions against the 49ers there. Legal motion and the holding. And UNLV electing to take the, the bigger chunk on the holding infraction. It's first down and 20 now. Come on, Doug. Graham, six foot four. He's got the frame of the Pro Scouts like him. Play action. This is Kelly Ryan inside the 30-yard line at a perfect strike from quarterback Jeff Graham. 20 yards, that's what they needed. It may be another first down. This play was designed to be a rollout all the way to the outside. Rebel linebacker number 55, John Foster, watch Graham pull up, does a good job of keep keeping his feet, makes a great throw to Ryan to get the first down. And how about Kelly Ryan? It's a first and 20, and he runs precisely 20 and change to get the sticks move downfield. Well, that's he's a junior wide receiver. Receivers have to know they've got to get to the sticks, get the first down, but I was impressed with Graham's presence of Foster to his outside to pull up to make that throw. First down at the UNLV 26. Rebels leading 14-7, but now the 49ers are marching again. Sweep with Brian Browning. And Charles Anthony, the free safety, came up and knocked him off his pins. Just when it appeared that Browning would turn the corner, the defense able to collapse him. This Rebel defense has some great athletes on a good speed in the secondary, and it's hard to sweep and get outside of them. That play lost two yards. And it'll be second down and 12. Slot left, and now Brian West goes in motion. Is it a touchdown? No, at the one-yard line, it's first down and goal. 27 yards to Kelly Ryan on a perfect timing pattern. Well, we saw Richard Williams throw the same pass to Bernard Jackson. This time, Jeff Graham, it's the fade pass, man-to-man -man coverage, bump and run. A great throw, watch him keep the ball to the outside, and watch Ryan go up. Good concentration, and Hemmons did not even know where the ball is. Al Hemmons, when he sees the receiver look back, he's got to get his hands up or try to turn and make a play on the ball. They're a good concentration by Kelly Ryan. Bittner and Lafayette Shelton, the backs behind Graham. And the 49ers inches away from getting the equalizer. Bittner, touchdown. And Larry Reisbeck's team comes back to within 14-13, and the PAT could tie it. We're seeing both of these offenses open it up, and both quarterbacks are, resp are responding. There, another good drive and some good throws by Jeff Graham to get him down close. We'll watch Bittner just take it off left tackle. Powered in, an easy play to get in the end zone. Jim Bittner's second rushing touchdown this year. One against New Mexico State, and here today from one yard out, 
against UNLV. David Van Steen kissed. This year kicked a 55-yard field goal. He's got a good leg. And he splits the upright. And with nine minutes, 53 seconds left in the first half, UNLV and Long Beach State all knotted up at 14 apiece. With David Hum, I'm Randy Rosenblum. Nine minutes, 53 seconds left here at Veterans Stadium in the first half. And UNLV and Long Beach State tied up at 14. And both teams, David Hum, have moved the football. And they've got to be having fun. These quarterbacks, Jeff Graham, we know the passing ability he has. Richard Williams, he's got to be really happy with the play he's had here in the first half. David Van Steenkiss now set to kick off. Right now, the adjustments are going to have to be made on the defensive side. Both offenses are really playing well. Wills from his four-yard line. Trying to find the opening in that wedge and can't. Good coverage downfield by Long Beach State and Leon Patterson, number four. Richard Williams has to be having the time of his life. Scotty Sims started the first game against Baylor. Charles Price has come in. Williams has really not had a chance all year this year. I was surprised when Wayne Nunley named Williams to start the game, but he's had a super game. UNLV, but three and seven this year, two and four in the Big West. And Richard Williams trying to make the most of his only start this year. Five of eight, 117 yards, and a 28-yard TD aerial to Bernard Jackson. And there's a fumble. And Williams able to get it back, but that was nearly a costly turnover. Remember, Richard Williams has not had a lot of practice time. He's been running the scout, uh, the opposing team, scout team offense, so he doesn't really get a chance to work with that first unit, and there you can see the mistake. Well, he's been third string all year. And with Charles Price out with a knee sprain, and Scott Sims taking the snaps ahead of him, he hasn't been in there very often. At a reserve center, Paul Older as well, when Peko was injured, and Older's still in the game. Excellent protection. And now Williams will run. And he's to the 25-yard line where he takes a hit. Those quarterbacks will take uh, brutal punishment when they come upfield. They have to tuck the ball under. Jeff Billman drilled them five yards downfield. But a good job of Williams not taking the sack and losing that yardage. He actually gained three yards. And the thing there, he didn't force the ball in, throw an interception, or make a mistake. He protected the ball and got it upfield. Third and seven. Eight minutes, 30 seconds left. First half, we're tied at 14. That's a first down to the tight end, Robert Welch. Nice throw and an excellent catch as Welch had to reach high up to get that one. You got to think Williams is having fun there. You see his offensive players hitting him on the shoulder pads. They're happy for him. Watch the protection they give him. You see Williams look around. Welch does a good job of, of working into that open zone between the linebackers. Really a vanilla defense by the 49ers. They're and remember when uh, at the beginning of the game, Williams was just dinking the ball. Now he's throwing it downfield. Well, he's got a little bit of confidence going. He's got some completions, some pretty good stats and numbers here in the first half, and he's just having a good time. Levels from their 45-yard line. Blitz is on, and it's ruled a pass. It was Morrison that nailed him from the blind side. Morrison, who had an earlier sack of Richard Williams, so he's seen number 43 come at him before. I think it's the hit by Morrison that makes Richard Williams' arm go forward. Watch this, the backside. Williams doesn't even see Morrison, and it's basically the hit gives the momentum to that ball in his arm that makes it an incompletion. The speed, though, of Phil Morrison coming in untouched, and he really drilled Richard Williams. Second down and 10. And the Rebels going to the air more in this game than we've seen in the past. Another blitz, and down he goes again. It was Morrison. That was not a replay. That was just Morrison getting to Richard Williams again. And the fans that are here for this final game really applaud the effort of that outside linebacker. You're always going to have your best pass rusher rush to a quarterback's blind side 
you think the Rebels, they have a line slide to the right. You want to protect your quarterback. And if you've got a guy like Morris in there, bring that guard or if the center's uncovered out and pick up that blind side. And you know what Richard Williams is saying to his teammates in the huddle. Please block Phil Morrison. Wayne Nunley wondering about that offensive line right now. Third and 19. Pressure again. There is a flag down. Keenan McCardle tackled from behind by Pat Quigley, four yards shy of the first down. But remember, there is a flag. It's going to be holding on the on the Rebels' offensive line. There was a breakdown early, and a lot of times when a quarterback, especially after Williams has taken two pretty good shots, you want to protect him against that third. They're going to bring this one back. One of the few situations you see a team elect to take the penalty and bring it back to third down rather than fourth down. Well, when you've got a punter like Tony Ryans, you don't want to give the Rebels that positive yardage and have Ryans bury you deep inside the 10-yard line. Penalty moves the ball back to the 26-yard line. Three now. It's going to be third down, too, David, and mammoth proportions for Wayne Nunley's team. And Ryans has hit a 71-yard punt this, this year, so... The Rebels really with their punting situation with Tony Ryans are never really in trouble. You got a good call for third and 29. That's when you look to the sideline and all the coaches have their back to you. You don't have very many friends on third and 29. Let's see what Richard Williams can come up with. For Ricky Wills. Pete Jenkins with the interception. Gets a block to the 50. He's to the Rebel 42-yard line. Keith Jenkins, his fifth interception of the year. That ties him with Travis Clark of Utah State for the Big West lead. Well, Keith Jenkins was burned early in the first quarter by the touchdown pass from Richard Williams to Bernard Jackson. Here, Williams puts it up for Wills, but watch Jenkins go up and make the catch. Here again from another angle, Wills, if he can't catch that ball, wants to try to turn into a defensive back and knock that down. Jenkins gets his revenge, though, with the interception. At an 18-yard return by Jenkins. Now Long Beach State going to try to recapture the lead. That's a lateral, but it's caught by Kelly Ryan in the flat. And he gets inside the 40-yard line. You see Richard Williams there, number 10, kind of clearing the cobwebs. Is Offensive line are coming up asking him, are you all right? And he nods his head, he is, but he took a pretty good, a couple pretty good shots there by Morrison on that last drive. Brian Browning has checked into that backfield once again, replacing Lafayette Shelton. Browning wears number 24. Second down and seven. Ball just inside the UNLV 40. A 14-14 tie. Five minutes, 45 seconds left in the first half. Again over the middle. And this is Brian Browning. A good move back to the inside. He ran right by Jody Reinhold and gets a first down. By Brian Browning. But Brian Browning, a, a small running back, he gets a big linebacker like Jody Reinhold moving as fast as he is on a field like this. Watch the cut he makes. Reinhold just running to the sideline thinking he's going to try to use the sideline as that 12th man to help him, but a good job by Brown in getting back. First down of the UNLV 26. Pitch to Lafayette Shelton. And he's upended at the 20-yard line by Charles Anthony just when he was breaking into the clear. Shelton shows great speed. A lot of times a back when he gets the ball, he can wait and set his blocks up. And there you can see Shelton do that exact same thing and then burst when he sees the open field. Lafayette's having a fine game. Six carries, 44 yards. One of them uh, a 15-yard TD run. Lafayette Shelton trying to overcome early season difficulties. He had a dislocated elbow, and he's been very good helping Jeff Graham and that offensive attack establish the ground game. That's one of the most painful injuries you can have. Second down and four. To the far sideline. That's a touchdown. What a grab by Derek Washington. And another great throw by Jeff Graham. 
Again, it's the fade pattern. Graham will take a three-step drop, a 20-yard touchdown. He puts the ball up. Derek Washington, again, you see Al Hammonds doesn't react to the wide receiver looking back to the ball. Great job of, of Washington going up to the top, uh, to the top part of the ball. Derek Washington, there, six foot three, has that good size to go up and get the ball. For Derek Washington, his fifth touchdown catch, but more importantly right now, Graham, now within one of Jack Riley's all-time Long Beach State record. David Van Steen kiss adds the point. Four minutes, 39 seconds left in a high-scoring first half at Veterans Stadium. It's the 49ers ahead of the Rebels, 21 to 14. Well, the 49ers and Rebels putting points on the board today. It's 21-14 for Long Beach State, and it has been a seesaw affair. Long Beach State scored the first seven. The Rebels got the next 14. And the 49ers said, if you can do it, so can we. So Long Beach State has scored the last 14 and recaptured the advantage. Well, now the Rebels will get the ball back in that last series. They did not protect Richard Williams very well. And when you give an invitation to a defense like the 49ers, when you don't cover that blitz or protect your quarterback, you're going to see it a lot more. David Van Steenkiss kicking off to Bernard Jackson and Ricky Will. This is Wills at his three. And he has trouble fielding it. And he's in deep trouble, and down he goes. And the 49ers, a fired-up football team right now. Leading the charge downfield, Pepper Jenkins, number eight. Ricky Wills, a wide receiver and a kickoff returner. He knows he's got to catch this ball first before he runs. We'll see if he looks. It looks like he might have lost it in the sun. See the way the shadows are there. That ball might have been lost in the sun, but a tough break for the Rebels. We used to talk with the Raiders when we didn't protect Kenny Stabler or Jim Plunkett when I was there that were sending out invitations to the defense. We'll see if they've sent some invitations to these linebackers for the 49ers to blitz Richard Williams. Here. Now Williams has to start from his nine yard line back to basics, the ground game and Tommy Jackson. Now, do you think perhaps the Rebels got away from the ground attack too much? Well, I don't think they did because Richard Williams really did come out and threw some good passes, which gave the coaches confidence that he could come out and play well. So. Not really. Tommy Jackson did not have a good game last week with only 20 yards rushing against San Jose State. So I think Williams, his play has given the coaches confidence in him. Second down and eight. Ball just outside the 11 yard line. On the delay, it's Darren Brightman. High stepping it upfield for a first down across the 25 yard line. Pat Quigley. Made the stop along with Keith Washington. And a good uh, job of blocking by number 68, right guard David Ruggles. Watch Ruggles get the block on number 44, Mark Zieger Ziegenhagen, and springs Brightman for the first down. And some breathing room now for UNLV. The up back Darren Brightman, the tailback Tommy Jackson. And it's Jackson, and he slides down. And the players today are having trouble with their footing after the rain yesterday. And that's the second time Jackson has lost his feet as he was apparently there breaking into the clear for a pretty good game. Well, it's always in between the hash marks where all those the offensive and defensive linemen wear the field out the most. And when you get towards the end of the very end of the season in a rain like they had last night, that, that part of the field, you really don't have anything you can do with it. Second and nine. Long signal count by Richard Williams. That's a good tight spiral to Keenan McCardle on the out pattern. And it's a first down for UNLV. That's a great throw by Richard Williams, and you can tell he's having fun and he's confident. He stepped into his throw there. Good, good mechanics. Going through Richard Williams' mind must be now, what if I had a chance to play more during the season? Might be going through the mind, too, of Wayne Nunley. Richard Williams, a senior. Down with the freshman Charles Price most of the year. He's injured and not dressed today. Scott Sims also has logged a number of minutes, and he's a sophomore out of L.A.'s Dorsey High School. Again, a long signal count, and this time the whistle sound, and it may be delay a game. 
Williams has audibleized quite a few times today when he's read the blitz. He might have been doing that there and not noticed the 25-second the clock in the end zone. Well, he told us he wants to audibleize so he can throw it more. Well, he was concerned that the Rebel coaches might keep the ball on the ground and just run Tommy Jackson and Darren Brightman, and he wanted to put it up. So he said if it looked like they, they were, he would audibleize to get the ball in the air. It was delay a game, and it's first and 15. From the eye formation. On the ground with Tommy Jackson. And he's cut down. Big number 99, Chuck Reap. The right end, a senior from El Monte. He's an offensive lineman last year. They moved him to the defensive side to try to bolster that defensive line. And he helped out on that occasion. There's a look at the new UNLV mascot. I don't recall seeing that mascot on the sideline earlier in the year. That time the, the 49ers did come with the blitz and Richard Williams didn't get out of it. That was a two yard setback and it's second and 17 now. Here comes the blitz again, he's able to pick it up. Downfield, wanted Bernard Jackson. Good coverage from Stacy Alexander. And Williams made a great throw there under pressure. That time the 49ers brought everybody. Williams showed some good arm strength on that corner pattern just to get rid of the ball. Richard Williams has had good success on his third down ratio. He's three of five now and would like to pick up one here, but he's looking at third and very long, 17 to go. Two minutes and four seconds remaining in the opening half at Veterans Stadium with David Hum, I'm Randy Rosenblum, and Long Beach State leading you at LV, 21 to 14. Williams stepping up and throwing downfield for Wills, who was open, but he just missed him. He had Wills open. The ball was just a little bit long, but that time, Williams had good time, but a lot of times as a quarterback, when you've got good time after you've taken a couple shots like he had a couple previous series ago, you start to hurry things a little bit. And I think Williams is a little upset with himself that he rushed that throw. You see Terry Cottle, the quarterback coach, talking to Richard Williams, say, settle down and take your time. Tony Rines, originally attended Arizona State. The punter for the Rebels, one of the best in the country. At 13 punts in the opener at Baylor, that's the most this year by any kicker in the nation. Casey Alexander with the fair catch. And with a minute 52 left in the half, there's still time for Jeff Graham. 49ers have good field position. Jeff Graham, a senior quarterback, an exper experienced quarterback. The 49ers still have three timeouts left, so Jeff Graham's in a good situation here with a minute 52 to go. This is a conference that has been dominated, the Big West, by Fresno State, undefeated. Cal State Fullerton with a rush at the end of the year, finishes second, Utah State, San Jose State, and Long Beach State would like to jump up into that tie for third place as well. Graham throwing on first down. That's intercepted. Throwing into a crowd, and Joni Reinhold with a big play for UNLV. And you can see Graham is irate with himself. Jody Reinhold drops back into the hook zone, and Jeff Graham throws a dart here. Linebackers usually have trouble catching the ball. Their hands are taped up. Watch Graham. You can see him looking all the way. Jody Reinhold just reading his eyes. That's a great job by a linebacker just catching it with his hands and not trying to catch it against his pads where it can bounce off. There's Jody. I think that's before the Brian Bosworth cut, but say a real intense kid. Still looks tough enough. Rebels from the 30-yard line. On the ground with Brightman to the 25, to the 20, to the 15. Inside the 15-yard line goes Darren Brightman. And you know the 49ers were looking for the pass. The Rebels cross him up with the draw, and Brightman gets a big chunk. When you talk about turnovers, Richard Williams for the uh, interception to Jenkins that set up the 49ers touchdown. Now they come back with the draw play to Darren Brightman after the interception by Jody Reinhold of Jeff Graham. Brightman travels 16 yards to the 49er 14. And with a minute 25, it is UNLV that is trying to tie the game now. For Tommy Jackson. And he's hit down hard at the 11-yard line by Keith Jenkins. Jeff Graham, you know he's got to be upset with himself there. He knew he had three timeouts. There was 
just under two minutes to go. The perfect situation for this young quarterback, and he threw an interception on the first down. UNLV is called for a timeout. Minute 11 left. Rebels trying to tie the game before intermission. Just a minute 11 left here in the first half, and UNLV has an opportunity to tie this game. They have the ball near the Long Beach State 10, second and five. 21-14, 49er. And they keep it on the ground again, and Blightman inside the five, near the one-yard line. Hard running Darren Brightman. It'll be first down and goal for UNLV. Darren Brightman's having a super game. They'll run the draw again down here. It was second down and five. He'll get the first down. Watch Brightman. He breaks the tackle there of number 99. Chuck Reed does it. Makes another good job there of making that tackle a miss. Gets inside the five-yard line. Puts the Rebels in good position to score. And did you see the move of Brightman playing off the block of his quick tackle, Pat Harden? I think that play was designed inside, but he was able to move quickly to the outside. And again, it's Brightman. And he's in for a touchdown. And it's 21-20. So UNLV takes advantage of the Jeff Graham interception by Jody Reinhold. It's Darren Brightman day here. Darren's second score. Good, uh, good running by the young fullback here when they got down in scoring territory. Brightman, again, a good job. Watch him protect the ball, lower his shoulder, and just drive the 49er defender into the end zone. Brightman had not scored all year, and now he has two TDs. And Larry Reisbeck has to be pleased with the offense and not so happy about the defensive effort. But it was the offense that made a mistake there that set up Brightman's TD. Cook now trying to tie the game. And uh, just 42 seconds left in an electrifying first half. Wayne Nunley's Rebels and Larry Reisbeck's 49ers. Tied at 21. You can see Wayne Nunley. That's the way to go, kids. And then he's extolling his defense. We've got to get out there. We've still got a chance. You know Graham's going to be throwing the ball with 42 seconds left and still three timeouts. But we'll take a look at Darren Brightman's touchdown again. Just power play off left tackle. You see him run through Tom Kane's number one, the linebacker. Brightman only about five foot nine when he gets behind those shoulder pads and gets that leverage down close. He's hard to stop. Go, 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 go. You wonder about teams when they come into their final game mentally. Which team may quit? Neither one of these two squads is quitting, obviously. They both certainly would like to get a victory here today. Well, and we talked about it at the top of the show that for a lot of the, the seniors, it's, for all the seniors, it's their last game, but for a lot of the un underclassmen, they're setting things up for next year, for spring ball, and a chance to win positions for next year's team. Already 42 points on the board. That's how much time we have left, 42 seconds here in the first half. That's Bobby Flanoy, number 41, along with Stan Davis. They will return for the 49er. Keep that one on the ground. They don't want to have a long return. This is the fullback, Paul Bats. And by having the short kick and the fine return by backs of 23 yards, Jeff Graham has good working room in the final 36 seconds to perhaps get another score. Well, and that was a good job by backs picking that ball up. I think the Rebels were, were just thinking that the 49ers would just down that ball and not really try. You see Randy Whitsett, who used to be the quarterback coach for the Rebels, and Jeff Graham, his numbers today, 12 of 16 for 140, but that one interception that set up the Rebels tying score. Really just one mistake. Otherwise, those are terrific numbers. Uh, Graham now trying to atone for that errant throw. Undecided now. He will run to the outside. Gets away from Derek Nicholson. A flag is down. He went well beyond the line of scrimmage. I don't see a quarterback miss it by that much very often. He must have been four or five yards downfield past the line of scrimmage, then released the ball. Well, Graham had to break a tackle there that pushed him upfield. And for a quarterback, you really have to have that awareness of where the, the markers are. And that time he was way past the line when he threw it. Again, that thing where you try to make a big play and you're trying to make something happen. 
illegal forward pass on the offense. Loss of down penalty. Loss of down penalty. Second down. But that mark there is from where, where he was out of bounds. Now it's second down and, and 12. So he was three yards past the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball. And now Jeff Graham letting the clock run down. Now to 10 seconds. So the 49ers uh, apparently content with the tie. Lafayette Shelton dragged down by Jody Reinhold, and we will go to the locker room in a deadlock at 21. An exciting first 30 minutes of football. Long Beach State, UNLV in the season finale. Playing hard and playing well, 21 all. We'll have our halftime after this timeout. This is no place to be on your own. Without a guide, you can get lost real fast. It's kind of like taking care of money matters nowadays. You need a partner you can trust to show the way. Like Great Western, they can handle all your banking needs, from home mortgages and refinancing the checking and CDs, even investment services. You see, the Great Western family has over 100 years' experience and more than $30 billion in assets, so you can feel real safe. Need a strong financial partner? Let Great Western show you the way. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium. It's halftime, and it's tied at 21 apiece. UNLV at Long Beach State. And quite candidly, the first 30 minutes here, very entertaining, David. I think so, and I, I, it's fun to watch the play of the two quarterbacks. Jeff Graham, 12 of 16, 143 yards, one touchdown and, and one interception. Richard Williams, uh, 9 of 16, 150 yards, a touchdown and interception. Pretty even for that, and you can see in their stats, the score is even at half. Graham, certainly not a surprise. Richard Williams, first start of the year. He's impressive. Impressive and, and surprising. I think I'm, I'm impressed with the way the Rebels have let Richard Williams throw the ball. They play their offense the way they wanted to to come in if they would have had Charles Price or Scott Sims start. So I think Wayne Nunley has to be real happy with the play of Richard Williams. Now when you talk about UNLV's running game, normally you talk about Tommy Jackson, but in that first half, Darren Brightman was so very impressive, and he had two touchdowns. Well, a lot of times when a defense is concerned about a running back, they'll key on him, and Darren Brightman has really snuck in there and made some big plays in the two touchdowns that have been so so helpful to the Rebels. All right, what about the defenses? It's been an offensive show, all the big highlights from the offensive side, an occasional turnover here and there. What are the defenses going to have to do? Because someone's going to have to stop somebody before it's over. Well, I think when the 49ers have been successful, it's been when they've blitzed Richard Williams, and I think we'll see more Philip Morrison in a lot on a lot on the blitzes, and I think we'll see the Rebels try to put more pressure on Jeff Graham. In 30 minutes, we'll decide it. Long Beach State and UNLV tied at 21. The second half is next. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Long Beach, California with David Hum. I'm Randy Rosenblum. We go to the third quarter. UNLV and the 49ers of Long Beach State tied at 21 apiece. And the 49ers will receive this second half kickoff from Jim Cook. And I think Jeff Graham was not happy with his play in the final two minutes, and he'd like to get his momentum back with a good drive here to open the second half. Dan Davis, good look at number six. You know, he's an actor. He's been in a lot of different TV shows and a motion picture or two. He doesn't want to put on an act here except returning the kickoff in a positive light. And this is the aforementioned Stan Davis. And there goes Stan Davis. That's a great return near the 40-yard line. Gerald Robinson finally threw him out of bounds. The kickoff did not go very deep. Davis, it looks like a middle return. He breaks it to the left, takes it up the left sideline. Number 93, Jim Sanford is going to get a great block on number six, Gerald Robinson, here at the end of the play that gives Davis the chance to get outside and get good field position for Jeff Graham. Graham starts his team from the 38 and has Shelton in motion. And he's hit by Ron Banks and it's ruled incomplete. Nearly a fumble, too. Statistically, through the first 30 minutes, I'm sure these numbers will be close, and they are. 
UNLV had a big effort on the ground from Darren Brightman, but statistically uh, about even the turnovers. Hurt Long Beach State 2-1. to one. Time of possession also fairly even. That time we saw the Rebels come with Ron Banks on the blitz, and we'll see if they do stay with that mode that they try to blitz Jeff Graham. Graham again going up top. Over the middle, and Bittner never brought it in. That was a very catchable ball. It wasn't. He would have taken a big hit by Jody Reinhold on that play. Reinhold was just waiting in the middle there for Bittner to run the delay. Bittner, if he would have held on to it, you just hope he wouldn't have gotten hurt. Reinhold, a tough hitter. Larry Reisbig's team does not look good on these first two downs. Graham, 12 of 18, took a ferocious hit from Banks, and then Bittner dropped the ball. So it's third and 10. And that's incomplete through the legs of Lafayette Shelton. So it's three and out for the 49ers, and we haven't seen that very often. And Shelton would have had a problem getting a first down. He was about three yards over the, the initial uh, yard marker. He would have had to make a great play to get the first down, but Jeff Graham, I think things a lot of times will carry over. He, he didn't finish up well in the, in the second quarter, and here he comes out and has problems with his first drive in the second half. Lujan slipped, and the ball's blocked. And UNLV is going to pick it up. And the Rebels will have it at the 20-yard line. So Lujan lost his footing. Don Roberts returned it. And Willie ended up on the seat of his pants. Willie Lujan, it just looks like he loses his balance. We'll see if his plant foot, his left foot, slides out from underneath. And you can see him right there as he slides. It looks like he has a turf shoe on. Lujan, no chance there, not really a block. He just kicked it right into the offensive line. Well, the 49ers had that problem last week. A block kick resulted in a TD at Fresno State. Here they go again with that problem. First down at the 19-yard line for Richard Williams. And UNLV trying to get the lead early in the third quarter. Tommy Jackson to the 20, cuts it to the 16-yard line. Randy, you, you really don't expect a punter to have that problem with his plant foot. That's more of a problem on a on a sloppy field like this for, for the uh, placement kicker than it is for a punter. Well, you had the feeling he was hurrying because he knew the rush was coming. Well, they were bringing 10 men there that, trying to get the block, and Lujan, you're not sure if even the punter, he might not have changed his cleats when he came out for pregame warm-ups. Four times this year, Tommy Jackson has rushed for over 100 yards, but not so far today. This has been the man so far, Darren Brightman. He's inside the 15. What a luxury to have two quality backs, Tommy Jackson and Darren Brightman. Of course, last year, it was anchored by Icky Woods, who rushed for over 200 yards in a 30-17 victory over the 49ers. And Woods now the spectacular rookie for the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, last year was Icky right and Icky left. This year, they've had Tommy Jackson and Darren Brightman. They've gone more to Brightman here in the second half of the season when Tommy Jackson's had problems running. But here we see it. It's Brightman's day. On third and three, Jackson can't get to the outside. The defensive end, Chuck Reap, and P.O. Goodenay, number 98, disrupt the play. Reap was in there. Tommy Jackson really didn't even have a chance to make a move on Chuck Reap there. He was in the backfield so quickly. And now Jim Cook is on to try to give UNLV a three-point lead. Cook missed a long one in the first half. Tommy, Tommy Jackson. Jackson is down. Yes, David. You see him looking at the right knee. On a field like this, you really, as a player, you're not concerned about your the knee injury because the cleats don't stick. And here you, you look at Tommy Jackson with what apparently looks like a right knee injury. But when the field is this wet and it's this, this thin, there's not a lot of grass on this field. You don't expect to see these. We'll see it again. Watch Chuck Reap. He'll get in so quick, and you can see the right knee right there that Reap grabs, and it looked like he just might have twisted it as they were going down, especially there at the very end. Tommy Jackson was the player of the week in the Big West against UOP at 192 yards and three touchdowns. A quality player. Last year, of course, he lived in the shadow of Icky Woods, but not this year. He's had a terrific season, but he's in pain now as he... He's being helped to his feet. 
and that's a good sign that he's limping and uh, seems to be getting stronger with every moment. He may want to stay in there. I think he'll go out. The trainers won't let him play. Jerry Koloski will check him out, but uh, I think there's a likelihood now Jackson may return. I tell you, though, when you get up and you, if you strained your knee or, or anything in it, and the first time you take those first steps and there's not a lot of stability, it'll scare you. Oh, it's a time to be tentative. But for now, Cook can't be tentative. He's going to try to give his team the lead. A 32-yard attempt at straight on out of the hold of Keenan McArdle. Place down. Plenty of distance and accuracy. Two minutes elapsed here in the third quarter. 13 minutes still to play at UNLV back out on top, leading Long Beach State 24-21. 4,500 trucks in 45 days. Now that's what your Southern California Chevrolet dealer is out to sell. That's why he's making the best truck deals that he's ever offered. On extended cab, sport side, EL economy model, one tons, V6 and V8. With factory rebates and discounts on option packages worth up to $2,400. So can your Chevy dealer make you a deal? Hey, he can't afford not to. 4,500 trucks in 45 days. Oh, look at this. It's priceless. Naturally. It's mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. Here we go. Oh, wait, I'm going to charge it with the American Express card. So that way it's automatically insured. Hi, did you get it? Hi, it's mom. Terrific. You won't believe it. Don't worry. Remember, I used the American Express card. So it's insured. Lost, stolen, or damaged. A way to protect the things you buy. Membership has its privileges. College Football 88 is brought to you by your Southern California Chevrolet dealers. Get in and enter to win a trip to Porto Tularoid, Colorado, or one of 100 season ski passes to Snow Summit at Big Bear Lake. And by Great Western's family of companies with over $30 billion in assets, 100 years strong, will always be there. 24-21, and the arithmetic continues to build here at Veterans Stadium in Long Beach. And UNLV gains the lead and only took two minutes to get the field goal. And again, Jim Cook will be kicking off. Last game for a lot of seniors here, Randy. A lot of players, as they come out of the locker room, they know this is their last half of play for their respective universities. A tough time for a lot of these kids. And for Jim Cook, his final half of football. Dan Davis on the return. Again, he has a lane. Stan Davis, 35, 30. He's going to go all the way. the speed of Stan Davis an 83 yard kickoff return and suddenly it's the 49ers that lead the opening kickoff of the of the second half Davis had a good return to the left here they go return right you'll see Bernard Jackson number five is really the only rebel there that's going to be there to stop Davis Davis all alone in the picture there there you see Jim Cook Bernard Jackson he breaks the tackle of Jackson Long touchdown run gets the 49ers back in the game when Jeff Graham was struggling the last two or three series for the 49ers offense. Well, we thought we saw fireworks in the first half, and each team already has scored in the second half, and we've only played two minutes and 12 seconds. Van Steenkist adds the extra point. Wayne Nunley. Not pleased. His team's behind again. 12 minutes, 48 seconds left. Third quarter, 28-24, the beach. A spectacular 83-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Stan Davis has given Cal State Long Beach a 28-24 lead. Still with 12 minutes and 48 seconds left here in the third quarter. Special teams always such a big part of any game, and especially when you're covering kicks. It really takes discipline to stay in your lanes. They did the return left on the first kickoff in the second half. That time they came back to the right. The Rebel team, cover team, not in position. Ricky Wills and Bernard Jackson back as Van Steenkiss kicks off for the 49ers. 
Ricky Wills from his two yard line. And he has room. His own momentum brought him through the wedge, but he slid down. The wedge did a super job there. Wills just with the speed, he's looking like or feeling like he might get hit, but watch Wills. He'll, he does a good job. His wedge waits for him before they take off, and they do a great job of opening up a lane for Wills. But watch Wills, he's going to make the cut and just loses his footing. How many times have we seen that today? At least six or seven times this afternoon, uh, the ball carriers, or in this case, the return artists, have lost their footing from the 29-yard line. Richard Williams. Incomplete, there is a flag down. Wanted Ken Rogers, his tight end. You see a roughing the uh, passer penalty here. That's not the mistake Larry Reisberg was looking for from his defensive team after getting the lift from Stan Davis on the kickoff. We've seen the momentum change on every other drive for these teams, whether it be through a big special teams play or the play of Richard Williams or Jeff Graham. Richard Williams has done a great job of standing in the pocket, his composure and his control of this offensive team. I've been really impressed with his play today. This series has really been a good one. They've played seven games. UNLV has the lead four games to three. I think back to 1983 when UNLV could have won the conference title. They had the lead and Long Beach State drove over 90 yards in the final minute with no timeouts. Todd Dillon hitting his running back Mark Templeton and it took the conference title away. They've just played terrific games. That was not one of the highlights of the UNLV football history. Another marker down here is Brightman Carey. This one will go against the Rebels. Well, this is where you don't really want the officials. We've got a game that's a lot of fun. The scoring's going back and forth. A super game. You don't want the officials to really slow it down with a lot of flags. Here you see a holding penalty. Holding on the It'll be first at 15 now for Wayne Nunley's troops. Gonna move that marker just a bit and they'll make it first and 17 now. After the holding foul. To the far sideline to Darren Brightman. He gets seven back coming out of the backfield. And Brightman again, is a complete player. He sure is. And again, Richard Williams shows his composure looking downfield. Brightman was not the uh, primary receiver there. He went there late, picked up positive yardage, got him back into a, a second down and nine situation and another positive situation created by Richard Williams. Not trying to get it all back at once. Bernard Jackson wide to the right side. Already got a touchdown today. McCardle to the left. For Welch, too high and incomplete. RJ Coors on the coverage. Again, the 49ers, they bring the blitz and put the pressure on Williams, and Williams had to get rid of that ball earlier. Welch at 6'4 is a pretty tall receiver. He's got some good reach on him, but that one's still a little tall for Welch. Richard Williams now faced with third and long. Which defense will stand tall? The offenses have been in total control so far. Over the middle, Welch is wide open, so Williams goes back to the tight end. And it's a first down. And a good throw by Richard Williams. Welch does a good job of eluding the coverage of number 44, Mark Ziegenhagen. We'll watch from behind Richard Williams. You'll see a wide open Robert Welch. Mark Ziegenhagen had the coverage on Welch and a good first down on third down and nine. Good throw by Richard Williams. Welch bobbled it as he brought it in. Fumbled it when he hit the ground, but he was already down and it's a first down and a big third down and nine conversion for UNLV. And there's the 37 now, the 49ers. 
Slot right formation. And Williams is looking to throw again over the middle. Ricky Wills has another first down. And he's cut down by Tom Keynes. Hey, how about Richard Williams? Williams throws a strike here to Ricky to Ricky Wills. Wills will just run the slant pattern. Williams will throw this between the linebackers and in front of the defensive backs. Keynes does a good job of getting Wills down. Super throw, good catch in the hands there by Ricky Wills. Richard Williams has been very accurate today. 12 of 20, 199 yards, a touchdown and one interception. This from a guy that's only thrown one pass all year. On the delay. Always nice to mix in the ground attack. That's Key John Murphy's first carry of the game. Now we saw him two weeks ago against Fresno State score two touchdowns on the ground. That's the game Jackson was injured, missed. Murphy came in and scored twice. And no one really knew of Key John Murphy. The 49ers have really only seen him in the Fresno State films. Tommy Jackson with the knee injury gives Murphy a chance. He's a slashing runner. He's the cousin, by the way, of Icky Woods. Second down and seven. Key John gets three on his first try of the day. Brandon Malone setback. Wills with a marvelous grab. There's a flag down. Richard Williams went to the blitz there. The 49ers didn't show the blitz early. Their linebackers were in their regular position, but you could see the backs move over to slide left to, pr to protect Williams. No, you got it. Stay there. They're going to call Keith Jenkins on pass interference on Ricky Wills, but Wills did a great job of eluding that, making the catch. Watch this catch by Ricky Wills. The ball's low, which is a good throw. It's away from the defensive back in front, but there was interference before that with Jenkins. We'll see it again. Williams, good pressure on him, makes a perfect throw down in front and low where only Wills had the chance to catch the ball. The first down on that throw. Well, Larry Ricebig had to feel good after that kickoff return, and now he's looking at his defense, letting the Rebels march back, and they could take the lead now with, with a touchdown. It's first and goal. The ball just outside the five-yard line. We haven't played five minutes here in the third quarter. UNLV has a field goal and is threatening for another TD, and Long Beach State has a touchdown on the 83-yard kickoff return by Stan Davis. He, John Murphy's knocked down in his backfield. What a defensive charge there. Chuck Reap really played off the block and made the stop. Reap has really played well down here in scoring territory. We'll watch Reap again come off the block and make the tackle on T. John Murphy. 73, Dustin Quinton, the big offensive right tackle for the Rebels, had a block on Reap, and Reap did a good job of getting away from, from Quinton. Quinton weighs 305 pounds. And six foot five. Second and goal now from the eight yard line. Richard Williams trying to direct his team in the end zone. Get the lead back. Pressure. Flag is down. It's caught by Jackson. It would be a touchdown. Make that to Ricky Wills. But there's a flag down. Richard Williams is running back. Say, tell me it's not holding. It is holding. Ricky Wills loses a score. Okay, 10 yards. But again, another good play by Richard Williams. Williams, he had time early, felt the pressure, got away from the rush and threw the touchdown to Wills only to have it called back. Terry Cottle, quarterback coach, you can see him working. Holding with, on the offense, previous spot penalty, second down. With Richard saying, that's fine, let's go, we'll get it back again. Just go ahead and get the team in there and keep doing what you're doing. You've been successful all day. The poise of Richard Williams in this game has been remarkable. Any obstacle that has gotten in his way, he's been able to overcome. Let's see if he can overcome the penalty now. And you can see it in his face as he walks in the huddle, the composure he's got. Now from the 17-yard line, it's still second and goal. On the ground with Darren Brightman. He has a big hole, but he trips and falls at the 13. Again, one of the Rebel ball carriers loses his footing. Remember, the Rebels' home surface is the AstroTurf artificial surface. 
you don't play on grass a lot, you finally get on it, and you think you can make the same moves, but you can see that right foot slip about three yards in that mud as he's tackled by Keith Washington. But you're used to Astro Turf where you can make those quick cuts and you get on a field like this and you forget how sloppy it is. Eight and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Long Beach State 28, UNLV 24. Third and goal now. Jackson in motion. Wills at the five. He's down near the goal line. Oh, and a decision now for Wayne Nunley. Wills is to the one-yard line before he's taken down by Pat Quigley and Keith Jenkins. You know, Richard Williams wants to go for it, and Wayne Nunley wants a timeout to think about it. Well, and you know, Darren Brightman wants to go for it. Brightman's been tough down here. He scored two, two of his touchdowns when they've been inside the two-yard line. Well, they're down four points. So you got to think... Uh, with inches to go, they're going to go for it. This is a good throw again by Richard Williams. You see Williams there, he just steps into his throw just like a baseball pitcher. It hits Wills right on the number, and you see him trying to fight in just short of the touchdown. We'll watch it from ground level. Good throw by Williams. Again, his numbers are great for this game. Wills is going to make a good move to the outside. Now watch him cut it back and just try to get inside. He's just a yard short there. He reaches across trying to get the ball in the end zone, but he's already down. You know, they say that patience is a virtue, and certainly that has to be the, the tone of this game for the quarterback, Richard Williams. He has been sitting all year long since the midway stage of last year, waits his turn patiently, and the only reason he's playing today is Charles Price was injured, and uh, he and Sims are the only two signal callers who have had any experience prior. He was the senior, so Wayne said, hey, you have the ball, you can do what you want today, and he's performed admirably. I think the most impressive thing about Richard Williams today is his patience. When you haven't played, you have a tendency to rush things, to rush your plays, rush your throws. But Williams looks like he's been playing all year. This will be the 12th play of the drive. It's fourth down and less than one. UNLV trailing by four will go for it. With eight minutes and three seconds left in the third quarter. Full house backfield. Kyle Tuber, Darren Brightman, and Pete John Murphy. It's Brightman. Is it a touchdown? Yes, it is. TD for Brightman. The 49ers thought they had stopped him. Tom Keynes is irate. From our angle here on top of the press box, it looked like Keynes had stopped Brightman, but his second effort apparently got him across the goal line. This is the same play that Darren Brightman has scored his two touchdowns here today. They'll run it again. Watch number one, Tom Keynes come in and make the hit. And from that angle, it's hard to tell if he broke the plane of the goal line. Here we'll see it from another, another angle. Brightman, you see him tripped up early. He's hit by number five, Mauricio Gutierrez, the linebacker, and Kane comes in and puts the stopper on him. If the official says he's in. Jim Cook adds the point, makes it 31-28. So on fourth and goal, Brightman scores for the third time today. 7.59 left, third quarter, UNLV by three. The final Big West game of the 1988 season is a good one. And a high-scoring affair, UNLV leading 31-28. Darren Brighton hadn't scored a touchdown this year. And he has three today, and the Rebels lead. And he's got 14 carries for 84 yards. That drive, 12 plays, 71 yards. Eight at four minutes and 49 seconds of the clock. Still, the defense is being punctured today. Been an offensive showcase. Flanoid at his 15-yard line. A marker down, and so is Flanoid at the 28. He was drilled on the specialty team by this guy, Gerald Robinson. There you saw Bobby Flanoid make a good cut on this wet surface. When you, you play on this surface all the time, you practice on it, you know how to, how to run on a lot better than players that, that always use, are on that natural surface, I mean, the artificial surface. You want to hear a misleading stat? Time of possession in the third quarter. UNLV, 5 minutes and 25 seconds. Long Beach State, 36 seconds. But remember, that doesn't include the 83-yard kickoff return for a TD by Stan Davis. Offsetting penalties here. We've had a little bit of everything in this one. This has been a great game. Jeff Graham now. Jeff's been on the sideline. 
here. There's 7.54 left in the third quarter. Graham really hasn't had a chance to warm up. Not much for On the return, Clipping gets the defense. Dead ball personal foul offset. Wayne Nunley, a pensive look as he now will root for his defense to do something to try to stop this 49er offense. Graham on the ground to Lafayette Shelton. And he's wrapped up at the 14-yard line. Ron Banks really attacked defensively, number 18. Graham really has to establish himself now. The clock's running to get some momentum going. Graham's going to have to throw the ball and throw it well. But the Long Beach State 49ers, they're not going to win this game with the running game. Jeff Graham has thrown for a touchdown today to Derek Washington. That's his 40th career TD pass. On the ground again with Lafayette. Shelton, he fumbled. Hit from behind by Michael Fowler, and UNLV has recovered. Fowler stripped it away. And John Foster recovered. And things are starting to come apart for Larry Reisbeck's team in the third quarter. Well, Ron Banks, number 18, is also going, going to be in on this play. Watch Shelton. You can see he's waiting for his blocks and his hole to develop. You see the cut right there, and the ball is loose. You can see Fowler reach in there and knock that ball free. The turnovers have really damaged the 49ers. UNLV with the third takeaway today. They're stationed at the 49ers 17-yard line. So Richard Williams and the offense trying to take advantage. And here comes Darren Brightman inside the 15-yard line. Good call by the Rebels there. The 49ers had a blitz on. If that linebacker gets screened away, who's got man-to-man -man coverage on the back as he runs the, uh, the draw play, it's hard to get to him. Good yardage on first down for the Rebels. We'll watch it again. The 49ers will blitz. We'll watch Darren Brightman. Watch Brightman get behind his shoulder pads. He gets down so low that it's hard for a defensive player to stop him because of the momentum he can get. And he limped off, and he's been replaced by Kyle Toomer, number 23. So Jackson, first sideline, and now Brightman's out of there. Blitz, Pepper Jenkins. Nobody laid a glove on him. Richard Williams looked up, and Jenkins already in the grasp. That's the third time Richard Williams has been hit from the blind side. Apparently, the, the 49ers, watch this, he just turns to look, and boy, I'll tell you, that'll, it doesn't cause a bloody nose to clear the cobwebs. Now Kyle Toomer is out, and Howard Howe, reserve fullback, comes in. Pepper Jenkins with a big defensive play. He's a sophomore out of L.A. Missed the last couple of years as Richard. It makes the big stick there. They're down in 10. Ball back at the 18-yard line. For the end zone. Incomplete. Keenan McArdle. Leap for it against Stacy Alexander. What a great throw by Richard Williams. Remember, Williams took a big hit on the last play. This is a perfect throw. Keenan McCardle will go up high for the ball. He's got the ball in his hands. But there you see number two, Stacy Alexander, swipe the ball away. But again, a good throw by Williams. Watch McCardle go up, but watch, watch Alexander swipe the ball away as they're coming down. Good defensive play. You can see why Alexander was an all-conference DB last year. But again, another good throw by Richard Williams, the UNLV quarterback. Cook will try one from 35 yards on the near half. It's a 31-28 game for UNLV with 5.43 left in the third quarter. Plenty of distance. And Cook has two field goals in this third quarter. Five minutes and 40 seconds remain here in the third quarter. And UNLV builds that advantage to 34-28. Well, again, we talked Jeff Graham is going to have to come in and establish a drive here. Both just to get things going, to get his confidence going. Larry Rice big, get, get his quarterback, let him throw some passes that are high percentage, get some completions going, and hopefully get a good drive. Tuesday, the Kings return home to do battle against the New Jersey Devils. Prime Ticket's live coverage begins at 7.15 with Kings Corner. Prime Ticket, the exclusive network of the Kings. 
In some respects, though, David, I would think that that's a, a winning situation for the 49ers after the turnover, the penetration deep in Long Beach territory, and the defense comes out and holds them to a field goal. Well, that's what your defense has to do when there's a turnover like that. Stacy Alexander made a great play on Keenan McCardle not to give up the touchdown and knock that ball away. But again, Richard Williams throwing the ball great. Got to go back to Tim Golden's heroics against UOP back in 1983. And here today, Stan Davis in this quarter has traveled 83 yards on a kickoff return for a score. You better believe Wayne Nunley said something to his kickoff coverage team right now to get down and be aware of Davis' ability. UNLV, 13 points on the board in the first quarter. And the seven points represented by that kickoff return for TD for the 49ers. This one will be returned by Bobby Flanoid. Down it goes. And the ball is loose. There are flags down. All over the place. Charles Anthony was the rebel coming downfield that really lowered the boom. But there you saw Jim Cook, he did kick away from number six, six Stan Davis. Hold it in against Cal State Long Beach and they'll be backed up again. And they have not had field position in this quarter. Take it back. Our referee today is Mike Carrera. Tells us it is indeed the hold. Again, poor field position, and it's so hard to drive and score touchdowns when you've always got that 80 yards, that 85 yards to go to get a touchdown. There's too many ways that things can go wrong. Jeff Graham, if he wants to get his team in the lead, he's going to have to take up 82 yards in this situation. Just bat it down. The pocket is starting to collapse. 55, John Foster, the strong outside linebacker, got the arms up. But this is reminiscent of last week when Jeff Graham was sacked 10 times by Fresno State. That pocket just not holding up for him. You can kind of see the posture now as we look at Jeff Graham, 12 of 20, only 143 yards. These aren't numbers that Jeff Graham's used to posting. But when we've got five minutes left, five minutes and 28 seconds left in the third quarter, Graham's used to having a lot bigger numbers than this. Second and 10. In for the safety valve over the middle. Good catch. Shelton made the grab, and Jody Reinhold with a pretty good hit. Long Beach State only 11 total yards here in the third quarter with five minutes left. UNLV with 82 yards, and they've been in great field position. They've had great field position this whole third quarter. The defense of the Rebels playing much better in this third stanza. 34-28, UNLV leading. Under five minutes remaining third quarter. It's third and three. Graham curling out of that pocket. Downfield, it's up for grabs and intercepted by Al Hemmons. And the fourth turnover and second interception against the 49ers. And for Al Hemmons, his first interception of the year. And this is a big mistake by the senior quarterback, Jeff Graham. Graham is third down and three. He could run and get the first down here. Here he throws to Greg Johnson high. The ball's deflected. Anthony there, and Hammonds goes up and makes the interception. But again, a mistake by Jeff Graham. And again, UNLV is set up in great field position, the 49er, 45-yard line. There it is, four turnovers now against Long Beach State. Darren Brightman is back in at fullback. Play action pass didn't fool Pat Quigley at number 49, sacks Richard Williams. Does a Mark Gaskinall like dance. Richard Williams is going to be a little sore tomorrow. He's going to finally log some time that he hasn't done all year, and that's in the tub. But what's the play action pass again? It's standard play action. Pat quickly. No one blocks him. Williams time early, but again, you see him take another good shot. Williams has had pressure on him all day. Pat Quigley's a senior. 
originally attended the University of Illinois. On the delay. Key John Murphy blocking and carrying the football. I believe that was Kyle Toomer. The 49ers defense has played well here in the third quarter, not to give up more points, but the good field position the Rebels have had. You know, that was Tommy Jackson that came back. Jackson is back in the ball game. So both Brightman and Jackson have come back. Remember, Jackson limped off earlier. UNLV 4 of 10 on third down conversion. Blitz. And that forced the hand of Richard Williams. He had to unload early. The free safety Keith Washington was charging in unblocked. Again, Williams took another big hit. When the 49ers have been successful on defense, it's been with the safety blitz or with bringing the linebackers, and Williams taking a couple good shots today. Well, UNLV has had field position, and they've scored 13 points, but they have not put Long Beach State away. It's still only a six-point game. Three minutes, eight seconds left in the third quarter, and still the entire fourth quarter to go. Rhymes a low short kick. And the 49ers will have it. But again, they're pinned back inside their 20-yard line. But not a great kick there by Tony Ryans, and the 49ers are lucky just to have it on the 18-yard line coming out. Jeff Graham's thinking, one big play. He has a big play receiver, and Derek Washington wide to the right, to the left, Kelly Ryan. I think Graham would be happy to get a couple of short ones here just to get his confidence back. Well, they stay on the ground with Lafayette Shelton, and he can't turn the corner. He's going to lose ground. Jody Reinhold chased him across the field. That was a magnificent play by number 46. Jody Reinhold has really developed into the leader on this defensive unit. Lafayette Shelton with great speed, but watch Jody Reinhold run him down. He's got the sideline there to turn him back, but super job by Reinhold. That's a loss of six yards. But again, the 49ers just can't get anything going on first down to get positive yardage to take pressure off Jeff Graham. Greg Johnson in motion. Quick pass to Johnson. Trying to isolate him in the flat. And he gets back most of the yardage they lost on first down. But it's going to bring up a third and long. The 49ers unable to move the ball here in the third quarter. That's a tribute to the UNLV defense. It sure is. They've been all over the field against the 49ers. And again, Jeff Graham's in a tough situation with third down and a little over 10 yards to go for a first down. They really have not done anything productive in the third quarter. One more play, you're out. One more play, you're out. Their touchdown here, the kickoff return. They have not moved it offensively. Ryan in motion. He has an open target. It is Kelly Ryan. To the 40-yard line. That was well thrown and a good pattern downfield. A great throw there by Jeff Graham. Graham again with the rollout to buy time, a 22-yard game. He'll hit Kelly Ryan. Ryan just finds the open hole in the zone here. There you see a great throw. And for a quarterback like Jeff Graham, a play like that a lot of times can spark him. And he's just as confident he's back and he makes a big play. First down. The beach at their 45-yard line. Trying to close the year with a victory and a winning record in the Big West. Shelton. Slides down at the 43-yard line. And again, it was Ryan Hole on the stop. But again, a good awareness by Jeff Graham. He was looking downfield. He was looking to his right and just found Shelton at the very end. Picked up four yards. Gave him a little bit better chance at second down and six to mix up, mix up his offense and not be always in that second and third and long situation. The quarter dominated by UNLV to this point. Jim Bittner has running room. He's a very strong running back. He has a first down in UNLV territory to the 44-yard line. Finally hauled down by Charles Anthony. 
Now you can see the 49ers start to mix, mix their offense up, the rollout by Graham, the draw, the reverse trap there. This is what the 49ers were doing well in the first half and have not done well here in the third quarter. Down to 25 seconds remaining in the third quarter. At Long Beach State, trying to recapture the lead. It's been a seesaw, high-scoring affair here at Veterans Stadium. That's a dangerous pass. Did Derek Washington come up with it? No, it's ruled incomplete. But when you throw it across the field like that, you risk an interception. The break that Al Hemmings was making on that ball, I thought he was going to have a chance to pick it off. Luckily, the ball was thrown low enough that Hemmings didn't have a chance to pick it. Hemmings just had an interception. Looking for number two in the quarter. Only nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. A lot of crazy things have happened today. Freewheeling and highly entertaining. Set up the screen. Ryan Browning, 40. Cuts back to the 35, to the 30. He's to the rubble 27-yard line, but there's a flag again. Wayne Nunley hoping this one's coming back. Larry Reisbeck saying, no, not my offense. Perfect play, though, against that furious rush to throw the screen. And Browning did a great job of waiting for his blocking to develop. Get the yards for a first hit down, but we see the, the officials walking this back. The name of the game, though, David, is execution. It's so hard for a coach. Play. On the last play of the quarter, that's a clip against the offense. The penalty, penalty will extend the quarter by one play, second down. A coach can put the plays in, but he can't, he can't run the ball, he can't make the blocks, and it's so frustrating to stand on the sideline when your players are making mistakes and killing themselves. This will be the final play now of the third quarter. Second down and 13. Graham with a pump fake. Far side for Derek Washington, incomplete. Good coverage from Al Hemmons. Well, that ends the third quarter. UNLV is out in front 34-28, but there's still 15 minutes left of football for both these teams in 1988. The fourth quarter at UNLV clinging to a six-point advantage over the Cal State Long Beach State 49ers. 34-28. And the 49ers looking at third and 13. Trying for the big play here. Keep the drive alive. Screen across the field to Brian Browning. He needs a block. Can't find one. It'll be fourth down. Third down and 13 to run that play. The Rebels were in a zone defense, and when you're in the zone defense, your defenders are just going to find an area and squat there. Rather than on that, you try to pick somebody off as the linebacker's going back for a guy like Browning where the play is going. So a tough call on third down and 13 to throw that screen across the field. Willie Lujan, Will Punt, he's had a tough time in recent weeks. Total yardage. UNLV accumulating over 300 yards. 49ers not too far behind. movement but no flag. Lujan does not get off a good kick. McCardle dangerously comes up field with it and then he's tagged pretty good by Pat Quigley. Tough feeling when you know that's a short punt and you're running up on it and don't make the fair catch you're going to take a pretty good hit. But you could see Lujan there after he slipped and had the one block right at the beginning of the third quarter. You could see his technique there. He was concerned about the, the sloppy field conditions. Richard Williams said before the game, I want to have fun. Well, I got to believe he's having a lot of fun with those kind of numbers. I didn't think he'd, he'd think he'd have this much fun. 14 to 24, 223 yards. One touchdown was called back on a penalty. So super game for that young man. Cody Pinko is back in at center. He was shaken up in the first half, and Brightman is tripped up. Nice effort by the free safety, Keith Washington. Came up and knocked him down with that left arm. But you know when the free safety is up there that it's, this is an all-out blitz, and they're trying to put pressure 
on Richard Williams, but Washington does a good job of getting Darren Brightman down. Brightman, a tough runner. A loss of one. It'll be second down at 11. There's Keith Washington, only a sophomore. He prepped at Verbum Day High School. Williams, second back through. Tommy Jackson, he can't get free. Tom Keynes wraps him up. That time Jackson made the break to the outside, and it appeared that Darren Brightman had Tom Keynes blocked so that um, Jackson could come back inside. See the block by Brightman, he has Keynes on his outside shoulder, and Tommy Jackson runs right into the linebacker to make an easy play for him. Keynes is a senior. They thought he was going to be all-conference this year, but injuries have denied him enough starts to be an all-conference player. But still, he's very talented and very aggressive. On third down, Richard Williams needs a big play. Over the middle, incomplete. And the defense of Long Beach State Hole tried to hit Darren Brightman. But again, the 49ers brought the blitz, and Richard Williams had to get rid of that ball early. And Tony Rhines will be called upon to root out a big one here for the Rebel. The dangerous Stacy Alexander standing back at his 35-yard line. There's a terrific kick over the head of Stacy Alexander. Bounces back for the 49ers, but what a kick there by Tony Rhines, 57 yards. UNLV is leading in this one, 34-28. 12 and a half minutes left. I'll get it, Alex. Mel's Market, here's your order. What order? Side of beef. I didn't order Here's your delivery, sir. What delivery? Your Stroh's 30 packs. Stroh's. Alex? Nah. Stroh's and Stroh Light, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. And with 30 packs, you get more beer. Pardon, Pierre Stetchup, here's your poodle. Oh, Alex. <laughs> Toyota Camry. Comfort. Room. Toyota quality. One more thing for 89. Camry has room with a great view. My Toyota, my life. After that terrific kick by Tony Rhymes of 57 yards, the 49ers start at their 21-yard line. Trail into this game, 34-28. For Derek Washington, incomplete. A lot of fakes in that backfield, and Graham trying to cross up the defense of UNLV, but they wouldn't bite. Well, they, they tried to run the play action quick screen to the left. John Foster, number 55, the Rebels linebacker, was right in Graham's face, and Graham had to double pump before he got rid of that ball and just threw it too hard. Not bad numbers for a quarterback, but not for a quarterback like Jeff Graham. How high will Jeff Graham go in the NFL draft? They're talking about him going in the top, in the top five or six quarterbacks in, in the country. Greg Johnson in motion. And Graham again. Good protection. Wide open receiver. Johnson. That's a first down to the 39-yard line. There, a good throw by Jeff Graham to Greg Johnson. We'll watch Graham. He's going to wait for Johnson to get open behind the zone. You can see the deep zone there on the left side of the screen, wide open. The cornerback did not get deep enough to cover Johnson, but the pro scouts, they like to watch a young quarterback bring his team back and win a game when Graham's in the situation he's in now. 18 yards on that hookup. It's first and 10. Graham back over the middle to Derek Washington, and he pays the price. Jody Reinhold there again. But Jody Reinhold is not going to leave the middle of the field, so whenever the 49ers run that little delay with their backs out of the backfield or a wide receiver like Washington comes over the middle, 
They better believe Jody Reinhold's going to be sitting waiting for him right there. 12 minutes left in this one. UNLV on the road leading 34-28. It's the Long Beach State 49ers. It was 21 all at halftime. A lot of fireworks in the first part of the third quarter. Now the defenses are starting to take uh, control of this game. On second and six, Lafayette Shelton runs into Doc Y. And it'll be third down upcoming for Long Beach State. Well, Graham audibleized there. You could see him going from split backs to the eye back formation and audibleizing the uh, ISO play, but a good job by Doc Wise. Well, this is a third down at four, and you know this man, Larry Reisberg, wants to convert. Trailing by six, he doesn't want to kick it away with 11 minutes left in the game. Gordon Adams, four of 11 on third down conversion. Quick out for Kelly Ryan. Well, he made a nice adjustment on the ball, and that's a big first down. That was a quick out that took a long time to develop. We'll see it again. The ball's going to be thrown behind Kelly Ryan. This is one that Graham took a little long to get rid of, but watch Ryan, good concentration. You see that right foot down. He only needs one foot in bounds in college ball, and a good job of getting the first down. At the 48-yard line, six catches today for Kelly Ryan. Those are Derek Washington numbers. Derek draws a lot of attention, and Ryan... The benefactor on the reverse to Greg Johnson. Gets a block from his quarterback, Jeff Graham, and turns the corner. Ron Banks finally was able to run Johnson down. So that's, this is a play that Michael Fowler, number 27, the defensive back for the Rebels, is glad this is the last game of the season. He won't have to watch this block. Jeff Graham gets on him with his teammates tomorrow. But watch Graham, number 12. He does a good job of knocking Fowler on his back. Hey, these quarterbacks, those are usually the guys you want out front blocking for you. Yeah, right. And who are you kidding? Did you ever block in your career? No, never. I knew it. Second down and four. After all that, it picks up six, and this isn't going to pick up anything. Derek Nicholson, number 90, stood up to play, and Jim Bittner was hitting his tracks. And once again, the 49ers will be looking at a crucial third down situation. Usually in a situation you get man-to-man -man coverage, it's third down and four, and the 49ers really do a good job with their backside of the backfield and running the crossing pattern. Well, on the last third down and four situation, they hit Kelly Ryan. Three of six on third down conversion. the 42-yard line. Graham. Wide open is Washington. A flag is down. Washington scores. Now we'll have to check the marker. Charles Anthony, number four, the safety for the Rebels, is calling pass interference on Washington. That's the call. So Jeff Graham, that would have been an historic touchdown for him. It would have been his 41st to tie Jack Riley here at Long Beach State for the high water mark. But it will come back. And the 49ers that close to tying the game. And the PAT could have given them the lead, but not anymore. And Graham did a great job of eluding the Rebels' pass rush and just being able to see Washington behind Charles Anthony. And on the offensive interference, they lose the down, so it's fourth down, and they have to punt it away. Not only lose the touchdown, they lose ball possession. Lujan has had a tough afternoon. How tough is that on the team when you've got a chance to score the go-ahead touchdown and extra point, and here you end up punting the ball away. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. They peel back for the return, and Lujan continues to struggle. It's a kind bounce that will take it down to the 22-yard line. Nine minutes, four seconds left. The 49ers nearly have the lead, but they don't. It's still UNLV by six. Just over nine minutes left in the game. UNLV leading by 34-28. Rebels have won the last two years against the 49ers. 
Williams wide open is Ricky Will. And he's punched out of bounds by Stacy Alexander. Again, Richard Williams goes to the audible. He sees the blitz, throws the quick pass, gets big yardage on first down, gets eight yards on first down, second down and two. A great situation for a quarterback to be in. As we look at Randy Witsit, Randy coached Randall Cunningham and Steve Stallworth, uh, the quarterback that, that replaced Randall Cunningham. He came here two years ago working with Jeff Graham. Again, a new system for Jeff Graham, but Randy Witsit, I'm sure, saying, man, just keep your composure and we can get, to get back in this game. Second down and two. It's gonna be a first down. The pattern, too, for UNLV, a little bit different. Throw it on first down, then sending Jackson into the middle of the line on second down. Uh, that is not how the pattern that they've done for most of the year. You know, they haven't. And Richard Williams really was not in the quarterback derby at the beginning of the year. It was Scott Sims and Charles Price. Williams was really not in the picture. And now we're seeing Williams come out the last game of the season and just have a super game. And one of the reasons William wasn't in there was because he's not a great runner. And Wayne Nunley wanted a quarterback that was a little more mobile. But he's very intelligent and very accurate in throwing the ball. Over the middle, Ricky Wills. And oh, what a hit from R.J. Kors, and it's incomplete. And that'll fire up the 49ers. And oh, if it doesn't, nothing will. Well, he fired up Ricky Wills there. Wills a good job just to get back on his feet. You see him adjust his helmet. But again, a perfect throw by Richard Williams. But watch the hit. R.J. Coors puts on Ricky Wills. Highlight material. Mm, that's how they diagram it defensively. Get the shoulder pad in there. And as a receiver, then you kind of get up and say, no, that really didn't hurt. Yeah, right. you're trying to get your breath. Yeah. <laughs> R.J. Coors was shaking up earlier in the year, missed a few games. Had a knee problem. Nothing wrong with him now. There you go. In the flat. Had a short pick up there to Darren Brightman. Darren Brightman shows good hands for a fullback. Fullbacks usually wear the bigger shoulder pads, so when he passes it's a little higher, it's harder for him to get up to it. But again, a good catch by Brightman. Brightman's just having a super game for the Rebels today. Pick up four, but the Rebels are looking at third and six. Approaching eight minutes left in this game. But they're getting the ball out. They're, they're inside their own 40. They've got a punter like Tony Ryan. So even if they don't get the first down, you know that Jeff Graham and his offensive team are not going to have good field position. Ricardo wide right. Bernard Jackson to the left. Duffy, Cushery, and Williams, who gets free. Out of bounds. Wanted Bernard Jackson on the near sideline. Good defensive coverage from the free safety, Keith Washington. But again, a great move by Richard Williams to get away from the tackle on, Robert, and eluding the sack by Daniel Duffy. You see Bernard Jackson getting up kind of gingerly. He, by the way, is not related to Tommy Jackson. Tommy's from Los Angeles. Uh, and Bernard is from Georgia. Ryan's just hit that 57 yarder. That's another good one. Alexander fielding it at his 13. Lost it in the sun and then found the handle. Out to the 20, maybe the 21 yard line. Got a good block turning the corner from 94, David Riley. Friday at 10 o'clock, Prime Ticket tips off its college hoop schedule when UC Irvine, the Anteaters, visit the San Diego State Aztecs. Prime Ticket will carry 44 college basketball contests this season. Prime Ticket, sports television at its very best. Seven and a half minutes left in the game. UNLV leading by six. And the 49ers with another chance. They just had a TD to Derek Washington call back. Looking to set up that screen. And Brian Browning has blockers. To the 30. And out of bounds with another First down off that screen. That has been very effective for him today. But a great individual effort by Brian Browning. The 49ers, when you throw this much, you know in practice you work on the screens a lot. We we'll watch Jeff Graham. He plants his feet before he goes into his back pedal to set up the screen. Watch Brian Browning make a good move around number 24, Rodney Crozier, to get the first down in big play. Get good field position for the 49ers. Brian Browning. 
Big reception there out of the backfield for 11 yards. Inside counter to Lafayette Shelton, and he stood up by John Foster, number 55. The 49ers have run that play six or seven times today, and as a defense, once you see a play that many times, you recognize the blocks and the keys, and you kind of stay home and don't really overrun it. You don't think Wayne Nunley's animated about this final game? Wants the end of the season on a positive note. He's letting that defensive unit know it. Nunley's excited about next year. He's got a lot of people coming back. He's got his program kind of in a position that he'd like to be right now. A tough year for him. Second down and 10 for Jeff Graham. And again, he wanted Bittner, and he's wide of his target. Now Graham's going to have to come up with a big third down play. Graham knows with the way the Rebels are playing on offense, they're eating the clock up. Uh, Richard Williams is throwing the ball well. They're throwing the high percentage passes. He needs to get a first down here. And the clock is becoming a factor now. Six minutes and 40 seconds remain. A big third down for Jeff Grail. Lafayette Shelton breaks a tackle and has a first down. What an effort by that running back. The senior from Compton, California. Shelton is about three yards short of getting the first down. But watch when he catches this ball. He's going to turn and run over number seven, Kevin Harris. There he breaks the tackle of Robinson, but see the hit he puts on Harris to break through that tackle and get the first down. Individual effort there. First down to the 43-yard line. That can get any prettier than that from Lafayette Shelton. Graham. Goes to Derek Washington, who was his secondary receiver. That's a... Uh, a sign, a sure sign of a veteran quarterback. He looked to his near side. Nobody was open, and then he went back to this guy, Derek Washington. Remember that secondary is reading the eyes of the quarterback. Graham spent so much time on his right side that Washington was wide open on the left sideline. There you see passing yardage pretty well even, and whoever thought Richard Williams would have 234 yards passing. But right now, Jeff Graham is directing the offense downfield. Out at the midfield strike. Over the middle. Another first down for Long Beach State. Gus Nellinger made the stop for UNLV, a reserve linebacker out of Thousand Oaks, California. But Graham is starting to pick the Rebels apart. Well, he's starting to move the ball around. He's throwing to his wide receivers, throwing at his tight end, throwing to the backs. So the Rebels are just kind of sitting in a zone defense, almost a prevent defense, and, a, and that prevent has never really prevented anybody from, from ever not moving the ball. Come on, D. Five and a half minutes remain. UNLV leading by six. Long Beach State knowingly trying to get in the end zone and get that PAT and get the lead. Lafayette Shelton darting back inside. He saw that the outside was closed off. What a defense wants to do, though, is close off the outside and force that running back back inside. But one thing we've seen is the 49ers running back's ability to make the good cuts on this sloppy field where the Rebels have really had problems. Lafayette Shelton, 13 carries, 50 yards. He had the first touchdown of the game. Seems like a long time ago. It was a 15-yard dash. And it's 7-0 at the time. A lot of points since then. Second out and seven at the Rebel 39. For Washington, what a catch. Derek Washington inside the 20. Michael Fowler can't defend him any better than that. We didn't see Derek Washington a lot in the first half, but here in the second half, when Jeff Graham knows he needs to move the ball, he goes to his favorite wide receiver. Watch Washington go up. That's how a wide receiver's got to catch the ball. Both hands, you see him watch the ball in, not concerned with the hit he's going to take. That's a 19-yard pass. And what a catch by Derek Washington. He had a 20-yard TD in the first half. First down at the 18. The counter. Shelton trying to get outside. And Anthony runs him down. Up easy, up easy, up easy. 
Had Charles Anthony not diagrammed that play, Lafayette Chilton was gone. Well, there you saw they were up with the blitz. When you're in the blitz situation, your defensive backs are man-to-man -man on the backs. Anthony had Lafayette Shelton man-to-man -man and had the speed to run him down on the outside. Four minutes and 21 seconds left in the game. Remember, a field goal will uh, would cut the lead to three points, but I don't think that's what Larry Riesbrick is thinking about. Tenth play of the drive. 49ers need a touchdown and a PAT to get the lead. Graham going to the near sideline for Washington. Touchdown! Graham and Washington were denied earlier in this quarter on a penalty. Not this time. With 4.17 left in the game, the big one ties it at 34. Now Reisbeck can get the lead with a PA2. Well, Al Hemmons, they did this to him in the first half where they threw the fade pattern. Graham, a great throw, and there the career, career TV passes. Jeff Graham ties Jack Riley with 41 for the career. So he gets two touchdown passes in the air today. The crucial PAT by Van Steenkist is a line drive, and it's good. So the 49ers, bidding to go 4-3 and three of the Big West, lead 35-34. And for Jeff Graham, another touch throw. He's got such softness on his passing. He's Unbelievable. Such a big man with such a strong arm, and the Pro Scouts love to see this. He's got to feel great. This is a perfect throw to Derek Washington. Hemmons has good coverage on Washington, but Washington great concentration going up and fighting for the ball. We'll see it from another angle. You see Jeff Graham put air under this ball, let your wide receiver run to the ball. There you see Washington going up at the highest point and making a great catch. But Dave, some quarterbacks throw the hard ball and it's tough for a receiver to handle. It seems to me when Graham throws it, it almost comes in like a baby. It's so nice and soft. Well, you, you can talk to receivers on teams and, and they, you ask them about the quarterbacks and some of them they say a quarterback throws a ball that feels like a rock when you catch it. It just jars you. But Graham throws that good spiral, a strong arm. He's got good velocity, but the ball is easy to catch. We saw Graham come down the field in the final two minutes and beat Cal State Ford. Here he takes his team 79 yards, 10 plays, 3 minutes, 15 seconds, a 16-yard touchdown pass to Derek Washington. Now the Rebels, plenty of time, though, 4 minutes and 17 seconds. The senior quarterback, Richard Williams, will have his chance to try to give the Rebels the lead. What a ball game. And steam kiss, a short kick. And Wills will return from his 17-yard line. Across the 35-yard line, Pepper Jenkins makes the stop. A good field position for UNLV as Jeff Graham looks on. The numbers, very accurate. A couple interceptions have plagued him, but uh, pretty good total. Well, that's usually the numbers you see Jeff Graham end up a game with. Now he's just got to hope his defense, which really hasn't been effective against the Rebels, can hold up and, and keep a win for him. But what's it, what a storybook ending for this quarterback, Richard Williams, his first and only start of the year. He just needs to get into field goal position for Jim Cook. UNLV has two timeouts remaining. Long Beach State has all three of there. Darren Brightman gets away from Quigley, gets a first down, and skips out of bounds. Remember, Jim Cook can hit from that 53 to 55-yard range, so Richard Williams just has to protect the ball. He's got four downs in each series here. He needs one completion out of those four downs to move the sticks. Great job by Darren Brightman of getting the first down. Ideally, Wayne Nunley would like to have, I know it sounds crazy with only four minutes left, a time-consuming drive and score. They don't want to give Jeff Graham too much time if indeed they do take the lead. From the 48-yard line, they'll stay on the ground. Jackson's denied, cannot find a crease. Remember, Wayne Nunley has a lot of confidence in his running game. The way Darren Brightman and Tommy Jackson have been running today, 
Take your time. There's 3.47 left in the game. You really don't have to rush it. They're on the 50-yard line. Just get in there, run solid plays, and hope your players will execute for you. And again, I think it's the philosophy. Let's not score too quickly. Try to get the touchdown or the field goal at the end of the game and win it right here. On second down and eight at the 50-yard line. Three minutes, 20 seconds left. 35, 34, 49er. Pressure. What a marvelous effort finding his tight end Welch for a first down. It appeared that Richard Williams was going to be sacked, but somehow he found the tight end Welch. You think this young man won't remember the afternoon he had here in Long Beach? Richard Williams, this play's designed to go to the left and all out blitz by the 49ers, but he finds Robert Welch to his right. Now watch Welch's effort to break a tackle by Pio Goodenay and get the first down and put the Rebels in great field position. You and Alvea at the 35 yard line. Three minutes, 13 seconds left in the game. Rebels need a field goal to get the lead. Williams, not basketball, throwing again. Intended for Wills, incomplete. Again, the audible when he sees the all-out blitz from the linebackers of the 49ers. That time they've run that play so many times that the defense has recognized it. So that rather than run the slant, you hope maybe the receiver would run the fade. Wayne Nunley, this, this victory is so important to him after the last month that his team's gone through. Three minutes and nine seconds remain. Second down and ten. Bernard Jackson in motion. Williams again is throwing. For Jackson, incomplete. Broken up again by Stacy Alexander. Well, it's third and ten. From here, it would be a 52-yard field goal attempt if Williams can't get his first down throw. And remember the condition of the field, Randy, here between the hash marks. The longer the field goal, the more important the plant foot for the field goal kicker. So from this distance, it's not a good shot for Jim Cook. 18 of 33, but he needs one here. Pressured over the middle for Welch, broken up by Coors, but there's a flag down. When the 49ers were in this third down and long situation, Larry Rice big called for the all-out blitz by the linebackers. Coors is going to have Welch all alone here. Williams does a great job. Watch the pressure. He can't step up as he throws this. The ball's going to be a little bit behind Welch. The official calls Coors, and you can see his left arm wrapped all the way around the right arm of Robert Welch. The interference gives UNLV a first down at the Long Beach State 20-yard line. Now well within the range of Jim Cook. Now with two minutes and 59 seconds left in the game, UNLV may get conservative here and stay on the ground knowing that they're in Cook's range. Jackson, 15, down to the 11 as he thunders through the Long Beach State defense. Keynes drags him down. Right now, Richard Williams, every time he goes in the huddle, the first thing he says to his backs, Men, we're going to run the ball, but make sure you wrap it and don't put the ball on the ground. Larry Reisbig pacing the sideline. Second down and one. Two and a half minutes left. UNLV trying to recapture the lead, trailing by a single point. Jackson again at the 10. Has a first and goal as he's finally stood up. There's Jim Cook. Probably saying, I'm a senior, I'd like to win it right here. He hasn't had a great year. It's been a tough year for Jim Cook. He's probably one of the hardest working players on this UNLV team, and believe me, this would be a great way for him to end his career. First and seven for UNLV TD. 
timeout Williams. Saw something in the defense he didn't like. Rebels now will only have one timeout remaining. A minute 56 left. We're coming down to a climactic conclusion. Long Beach State clinging precariously to a one-point lead. College Football 88 is brought to you by Toyota. Quality right down the line. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota. And by Strohs and Stroh Life. Now you're talking good times, and Strohs is spoken here. One minute and 56 seconds left in this game. And UNLV has reached the seven-yard line of Long Beach State. Trying to capture the lead and perhaps the game. Twin receivers to the left, Wills and McCardle. Out of the eye. The deep pitch to Jackson. At the five. Touchdown, Tommy Jackson. A seven-yard scamper, and UNLV has the advantage. What a great run by Tommy Jackson, and when you need it down here, you go to your best back, and that's Tommy Jackson. Jackson did a great job. You want to say, if I can't get the touchdown, make sure I stay in bounds and keep the clock running, but did a great job of cutting back. We watch Jackson on the pitch. It's a sweep to the right. Jackson gets the ball. Good block by Brightman out in front. He makes Kane's miss right there. Number 99, Chuck, Chuck Reap, who's had such a good game against the Rebel running game, can't stop Tommy Jackson for the go-ahead touchdown. His sixth rushing TD this year. And now UNLV will go for two points, leading by five at a minute 51 left. With that in mind, they have Wills wide to the right, McCardle deployed to the left, Jackson and Brightman are behind quarterback Richard Williams. He has Welch the tight end in motion as they go for two. A rollout. The pass is good for the two points to Darren Brightman. You talk about a storybook ending to your career. Richard Williams, the quarterback that threw only one pass all year, he'll roll out. Darren Brightman will run in the flat. You can see Brightman, he's in the flat, covered early. Williams has to take this a lot further out than he has to. There he wants to, and there's Darren Brightman wide open. Richard Williams has had quite the game, his final game for UNLV. Had not started all season long, third string, and suddenly called upon on the road after his team was beaten by San Jose State last week at home, 42-0. He comes back, and he puts 42 on the board. Richard Williams, the third-string quarterback all year, has run the scout team for the Rebels, has sat on the bench and contributed, has been a positive aspect of this team, and come in and had the game of his life. Now the flip side, Jeff Graham still has a minute 51 left. He has all three timeouts, and wouldn't it be something if he takes him down the field, maybe throws for a touchdown and breaks the all-time Long Beach State record? It's been that kind of day. This has been a great game. Two, two teams that are rebuilding have had a tough year on both sides, and to come back and play like they have in this last game, both of what they could be proud of. Jim Cook, and remember Stan Davis is deep, and he had an 83-yard kickoff return for a TD in the third quarter. And it will be Stan Davis from near the goal line. And he's in trouble. Charles Anthony was the first, then Gerald Robinson cleaned up. Come on, defense! The great return for a touchdown, and then the miss and the mistake here with the bobble puts his team in, in as bad a field position as you can be in. They've got three timeouts, but Jeff Graham it would be a miracle here to get back and get a touchdown against the Rebels. On the three. Yeah. 284 yards. Threw for 352 yards against the Rebels last year. He's going to have to add 97 yards to that total if they're going to win this game. Good protection. Look, look. Where's he going to go with it? Throws it into a crowd. A flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. But again, Jeff Graham ran by the line of scrimmage. That's the second time today. I think they're going to call offensive linemen downfield, Randy. A lot of times when the play takes that long to develop, the offensive line, they, they, they lose where they are, their position on the field.
Minute 35 left in this football game. You see Jody Reinhold, number 46, there asking Wayne Nunley what he wants to do with this penalty. Well, there's your answer. They've refused it. Second down, now in 10. So Jeff Graham has a lot of territory to try to cover and not very much time. Pressure. That's completed to the tight end, Brian West. And it's a first down. And Wiss is slow to get up. What a clutch grab by the tight end, Wiss, a junior from San Bernardino, California. And Wiss is going to stay down. The 49ers going to their two-minute offense, but with Brian Wiss down, they'll get a, an official's timeout. They'll, they'll save a timeout. They still have three. Jeff Graham will have a chance to get his players into the huddle and get back to the line of scrimmage and not use one of their timeouts. You see Brian West has been such a great player for these 49ers. You hate to see that so late in the game, the last game of the year, you hope it's not a serious injury. Clock has been stopped for the injury and because the chains must be moved. Jeff Graham is calling the play, as you can see at the line of scrimmage. The fact that he's a veteran. Here's where all that knowledge comes to play. Brown in motion. First down to the 47 yard line to Rosie Humphrey. Number 87. He just replaced Wiss and now he's shaking up. You got to remember Rosie Humphrey's been on the on the sideline the whole game. He's not loose. He comes in runs his first pattern. Watch Graham a great throw 29 yards to Humphrey but watch the shot Charles Anthony puts the, the double hit that Humphrey gets. Remember, this kid has not warmed up. He comes out tight and takes a hit like that. That's not the way you want to be introduced to the game. But to his credit, he held on to the football. Great job of concentrating on the ball, but and a great job of holding on after the hit he took. And let's credit Graham. He's moved this back team up, really back up, back up. half the distance already. He needed about, what, 97 yeah. yards? He's taken him halfway. Hasn't used his timeouts yet. Rosie and still has a minute nine, David. Charles Anthony and Michael Fowler. Tremendous hit. Double hit on Humphrey. Humphrey's up and walking off. What a tough way to come into a game and get one play and have to come out and get you. Graham is trailing 42-35. But he's trying to rally the 49 ers has accumulated 434 yards so far for Johnson and he catches it in traffic took it away from Anthony and Hammond they're inside the 30 yard line with 54 seconds left two of the most amazing catches and plays I've seen such a great job of catching the ball getting hit and keeping possession Graham trying to get his team in the end zone and maybe go for the two Far sideline to Lafayette Shelton. He's out of bounds at the 24-yard line. 44 seconds left. Who wrote this script? And remember, because of the injury on the two receptions, they did not have to use a timeout. The 49ers still have their, their three timeouts. And Humphrey and West both caught the ball and were, were injured. It was officials' timeouts, so the 49ers didn't have to, to use a timeout. Jeff Graham has thrown for 359 yards. Now remember, he threw for 518 at Hawaii. He was standing for a few minutes in the third quarter, but he has emerged again here in the fourth quarter. Graham is pressured by Banks. He's going to run with it. He's got a first down to the 10. He cuts back to the 5. And it's first and goal, and they'll use one of those timeouts, I'm certain, now. Although the first down stops the clock. 32 seconds left, and Jeff Graham giving up his body, running downfield. I don't think you can ask for more from two teams that are playing here today, the Cal State Long Beach 49ers and the Rebels. Watch Jeff Graham. He's going to drop back. The Rebels in zone coverage. 
Graham's going to roll to his left. The defenders think that he's going to step out of bounds, but watch the cut that he makes back into the middle of the field to try to get into the end zone. Big pickup. There's been a personal foul call, and it's against Long Beach State. Now the 49ers have to call the timeout. Larry Reisbeck has to be so upset with this call. The senior quarterback gets the ball down inside the five-yard line. We'll see if we can see where the clip. You see Graham rolling to the left. There you can see right there. It's hard to see the Cal State Long Beach player. You can see the trip that he does on the Rebel defender, but a great individual effort by Jeff Graham. There, Randy Witsit. You can see Randy Witsit and Dave Hoover, the offensive coordinator, and Randy Witsit there, the, the coach on the left, who's the quarterback coach, talking to Jeff Graham. Graham's got to be a little bit winded after that run and the hitty trip. Isn't it ironic? Both those coaches, formerly of UNLV, both Hoover and Witsit, first sure time good. out, they have two left, 32 seconds, and Graham still, despite the penalty, in shouting distance. Just inside, Wayne Nunley's 25-yard line. Well, in the tough thing there, too, Graham took the timeout. There was the penalty. I, he wasn't aware there was a penalty. He took a timeout, so it takes the 49ers down to two timeouts left with 32 seconds left on the clock. The dangerous Derek Washington to the right. He's caught two TDs today. Brown into motion. Graham back over the middle for Johnson. It's first and goal at the four yard line with 25 seconds left. That's 21 yards. Graham's over 400 in the air. This is a great throw to Greg Johnson right on the numbers to get that ball back inside the five yard line and a good job of not using the two minute offense and using a timeout here. It saves 25 seconds on the clock They've got one, uh, one timeout left. Tremendous half for this Cal State Long Beach team. Larry Rise big. Has 25 seconds. All right, I'm going to ask you the question. If they get it in the end zone, you go for one in the tie or two for the win. I guess you got to go for the win. I would say Larry Rice big would go for the win. His program needs a win to go for a tie. It doesn't do anything for your program. So I, I think for sure he'd go for two. What do you think? Richard Williams is thinking now about Jeff Graham, don't steal my thunder. Whatever you can do, I can do better. That's been the theme here today. And both quarterbacks have been magnificent. It's been an incredible game. Remember this drive started back at the 49er three yard line. In one minute and 26 seconds, they've reached the UNLV four. 25 seconds left. Kelly Ryan out of motion. For Washington. A flag is down. This one will go against Charles Anthony. I'm sure no one in the stadium thought that the 49ers wouldn't throw this play. It was man-to-man, -man, bump and run coverage by Charles Anthony. Again, the fade play to Derek Washington. And it looks like a good coverage here by Charles Anthony. You see Washington, but you can see the early hit that uh, Charles Anthony puts on Washington. That's half the distance to the goal. It's first and two yards to go for the TD with 21 seconds. Well, they have the option with two timeouts. They could run with Lafayette Shelton or throw with Graham. You know, Graham's trying to set an all-time touchdown mark throwing here at Long Beach State. The pitch out to Bittner. Fumble. He was ruled down. UNLV comes out of there with it. Gerald Robinson, now he realized that the fumble came after Bittner hit the ground. How, how can you ask for a more exciting game? Well, watch the, the run here, and, and you know uh, Larry Ricebig is thinking, cover the ball, protect the ball. The quick pitch to, to Bittner. You can see here as he's going down, tough to tell from there. It was close. You see it from another angle, of course, 
no instant replay in college football, but a uh, play like this, you say, well, hmm, I'd like to have one. 24, Rodney Crozier. That ball was a fumble. Sure looked like it. The official called his knee down, and it, it remains the 49ers ball, but from that angle right there, it appeared, it appeared that James Bittner fumbled the ball before his knee was down. 49ers forced to use a timeout. They have one remaining. They still need four yards on second down. Interesting that they would do the quick pitch to James Bittner, their fullback, rather than Lafayette Shelton, who has so much more speed. Washington wide left. Kelly Ryan deployed to the right. Bittner and Shelton behind quarterback Jeff Graham. Rebels have a five-man front. Ryan in motion. Ryan, touchdown! It's 42 for UNLV, 41 for Long Beach State. Now the final timeout for the 49ers will come to the near sideline. Jeff Graham has just set the all-time 49er record. And Kelly, Kelly Ryan with coverage by Michael Fowler, a great throw, the ball low and outside by Jeff Graham to break the record, but a tremendous drive from his own three-yard line. But Randy Witzer, the quarterback coach, and Larry Reisbig, the head coach, want one more play, one more big one. You work all season long as Graham's name's at the top of the list for this moment. And end on a positive note. And what a great way to break that record if he should come back, throw the touchdown to break the record that gets them close enough to get the two points and the win. You don't think Wayne Nunley's nervous right now? His team has fought hard all day long, but so have the 49ers. A classic battle on prime ticket. You've got to give Wayne Nunley and Larry Rice pick all the credit in the world to get their teams up when they're not going anywhere. One play for the game. The defense of UNLV and the offense of Jeff Graham and the 49ers. Senior from Costa Mesa, California. One play. Ryan left, Washington to the right. There's 12 seconds left. For Browning, incomplete. UNLV holds. Side kick will be forthcoming. There's still 12 seconds left. Larry Rice big, dejected. Wayne Nunley, cautiously optimistic. Larry Rice pick though, has to be so happy. There, number six, Gerald Robinson. We'll watch Robinson on Brian Browning. Derek Washington there in the middle of your screen runs the slant. They run Browning on the on the flat pattern and great coverage by Gerald Robinson. And there you see the reaction of the coaches. Randy Witzel, you can see him jumping up and down, and Wayne Nunley saying, thank you very much. Jeff Graham, he's got to be so disappointed. After the fourth quarter that he played, his third quarter he was down, really didn't have his club in sync or moving, and came back in the fourth quarter to have a tremendous showing. Bittersweet for Jeff Graham setting the record, but not getting the lead for Wayne Nunley. Both of these quarterbacks, Jeff Graham and Richard Williams, as good an afternoon as you can have as a quarterback. Well, the task here, nearly impossible. They have to recover the onside kick and somehow get in field goal range. There's the onside kick. UNLV has recovered it. 49ers still have one timeout remaining. And Larry Rise big. Dejected. They fought hard all day, but they're going to come up short. Wayne Nunley going to get his fourth victory of the year. Gets seven losses. 49ers will fall to three and nine. And for Richard Williams, 
1-0 is the starter of the UNLV Rebels this year. But more importantly, his final game, he goes out the winner. With the case of the what ifs, what if I had a chance to play more? What if I had a chance to get in there and take more snaps? But I think he'll look back for the rest of his life. If he doesn't go on, he talked that he might have an interest to play arena football. But if he doesn't, he'll always remember this game in Long Beach. And so, Mike David and myself and everybody at viewed it. It was truly a classic, an incredible affair. And UNLV wins again for the third year in a row over Long Beach State. This time, 42-41. Jeff Graham drove his team 97 yards in the final minute and a half. Got the touchdown, but came up empty for the two-point conversion. We'll come back for our prime ticket postgame show as UNLV holds off the 49ers 42-41. to 41. 